All right, so we are live, and let me just go live on IG. Give me on Instagram. Give me one second. Just gotta press the Instagram button. All right, we are live on uh, IG. All right, we are live, everybody. All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another session of the Goblin Cloud Podcast. Uh, Wednesday Hot Topic Show live out of San Francisco. As you guys can see, we have another full panel tonight, and we have another great hot topic for us to discuss for you guys. Um, as always, uh, all of you guys always tune into my live shows. Thank you so much for your love and support. You guys already know what to do. If you see value in the content, the best way to support me is to smash that like and subscribe button uh, real quick. All right, shout out to you guys as always. Thank you so much. Uh, don't forget, this is a live show. Uh, a lot of you guys reach out to me on Instagram asking me, I'm not from California. I'm not from the Bay Area. How do I join the podcast? There is a way to do it. You can join virtually, especially on my Wednesday and my uh, uh, Thursday night shows. Uh, the link is in the description. So click on the link uh, in the description below on YouTube. So if you're watching this from Instagram, if you're watching this from Facebook and Twitch and X, uh, come over to YouTube and you'll be able to get the link in the description. Click on that link and you'll be able to jump on uh, and be part of the panel. As you guys know, if you watch my content, I always like to hear from different opinions. Uh, it's it's great for conversation. So I do appreciate you guys uh, who always tune in and also jump on sometimes as public guests. All right, so don't forget, this is a live show, so let's get that live chat popping. I, saw, I see some of you guys are already watching this already. All right, don't be a ninja watcher, all right? Don't be a creep, all right? So say hello on the live chat, all right? So I know you guys have strong opinions. If you do recognize uh, anyone on the panel, show some love and support. Say hi on the live chat. And, of course, just, uh, say hello in the live chat. Let's get the live chat popping. And uh, just give a, a quick shout-out to uh, to my sponsor, uh, Global Impact Financial. All right, so definitely shout-out to them uh, for always uh, sponsoring uh, my show. But nevertheless, uh, yeah, the, uh, it's a financial service. So anyone, anybody watching the stream, if you – if you need help with tax advantage wealth strategies, if you need help with college funds for kids, uh, debt management, uh, if you want to learn how to be your own bank and create a family bank, life insurance and living benefits, uh, legacy planning in your culture to make sure you can add financial independence to your name. And of course, if you're interested in business ownership programs and ever thought about becoming an entrepreneur and making uh, additional income. All right, so uh, shout out to Savannah, reach out to Savannah. Her information and her links uh, is below in the description of the YouTube video. Uh, reach out to her and she'll be, her and her team can assist you uh, for any financial service needs that you guys may have. And she's also Pacific Islander. So if you're watching this right now and you're Pacific Islander and you want to support other Pacific Islander businesses, uh, definitely reach out to her and she can help you as well. But shout out to her, Global Financial Impact Services, uh, inspiring inspiring families to dream again. Contact Savannah Sanidoa. And her influence is in the description below. Uh, but shout out to her. Thank you so much. But as always, don't forget, if you do want to share your opinions and your perspectives on the conversation tonight, uh, drop it through a super chat. I'll be able to put it on the screen, read it out for you guys, and give you a shout out. But also, we can respond uh, to any questions you guys may have. So if you have a question as for the panel, if you have a question for the ladies and the gentlemen, ask it through a super chat, and then we'll be able to respond uh, to you guys. And of course, if you just want to donate to the channel to show some love and uh, to make sure that we can uh, definitely increase the quality of the content for you guys, uh, definitely drop a super chat and I'll be able to make that happen. But nevertheless, that's pretty much all my YouTube stuff. Thank you so much, everybody. Uh, but we'll go right into it. We have a great show planned. And a quick shout out to the panel one more time. We got a great panel of ladies and gentlemen here tonight, and we're going to have a great show. So shout out to the panel. Thank you so much for making the time. I'll pass it to you guys. If you guys, ladies, if you guys don't mind, give yourself a quick intro of who we are, what do you do for everybody out there tuning in for the first time and may not know who you are. I'll start with you, Anna. Anna, go ahead and give yourself a quick intro for everybody out there. Hello, everybody. My name is Anna. I am from New York City. I am 26 years old, and I work uh, for a catering company for special events. All right. Thank you so much, Anna. I will keep it moving. I'll pass it to you, Madison. Go ahead and give yourself a quick intro for everybody out there. 
Hi, everybody. My name is Madison Coper. I am kind of a serial entrepreneur and a couple different businesses, one of which is a law firm. So I am a full time business attorney and I'm probably the only person on here that married my very first boyfriend. So I'm excited to kind of share that perspective and see how my story is a little bit different and share some insight on true love. All right. Uh, you definitely you definitely are one of a kind, Madison. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you so much, Madison, for jumping on for tonight. We'll keep it moving. I'll pass it to you, uh, Neha. I'll go ahead and give yourself a quick intro. Uh, hey, guys. I'm Neha. I'm 35 years old, and uh, I'm actually a registered dietitian and a certified trichologist. Um, I'm, I'm from Winnipeg. All right. Thank you so much, Neha. I appreciate you for jumping on the panel tonight. We'll keep it moving. I'll pass it to you. Uh, Katie, go ahead and give yourself a quick intro. Hi, I'm Katie. I'm the host of the Pittsburgh podcast. I'm a speaker, so I travel to sororities. I've spoken over 70 colleges nationwide. I've been married for almost 20 years, and I am a mentor to young women, so I help a lot of young women with dating, and I love to talk about it. All right. Thank you so much, Katie. Uh, keep it moving. I'll pass it to you, uh, Mrs. True. Hey, uh, my name is Nicole, Miss True. Um, I am from California, a few weeks behind 39 years old. I am a claims adjuster. I work for a very big insurance company. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Miss True. Pass it to you, Amber. Go ahead and give yourself a quick intro. Hi, I'm Amber. Um, I'm from San Diego. I currently just moved to Tampa, Florida. And I'm currently back in school for my master's in cybersecurity. All right. All right. Thank you so much, Amber. And last but not least, uh, go ahead, Big Dog. Yeah, uh, I'm Big Dog Bark, and I'm from Memphis, Tennessee. Been married 19 years. I'm a um, relationship wealth coach. I invest in love and success. So, yeah, I'm just here for the conversation. All right. Thank you so much, Big Dog. And uh, shout out to everybody on the panel. Thank you so much for making the time. I see you, lovely world, on the live chat. Uh, yeah, you, ma you married your first love as well. Oh, congratulations. All right. Uh, congratulations. Uh, shout out to everybody who married their first love out there on the live chat. But nevertheless, if you're watching this right now, don't forget, this is a virtual show. Uh, virtual show and this is a public show, so the link is in the description. If you do want to jump on, click on that link. We do have some room on the panel. And don't forget, if you want to share your voice and opinions to add on to the conversation we're having, drop it through a super chat. I'll be able to put it on the screen and react to it as a panel. If you have any questions that you guys want to ask us as a panel. But nevertheless, let's get right into it. The topic we're going to discuss tonight, do men and women accept the harsh truths of their dating struggles? So let me just play this clip real quick. I saw this clip. It went viral. Uh, and there was an interesting conversation between the men and women about uh, about this specific clip uh, i'm gonna play it real quick uh, real quick and we get to react to it um you guys know who kevin samuels is yes familiar. okay all right so well all right he passed away so r.i.p to him uh but he definitely made a lot of content about dating and relationships and he had a very uh, direct approach to keep it keep it real all right um especially when he had conversations with women but let me play this clip real quick and then uh, it pertains to the conversation tonight Then we can uh, pass it to you guys and let me know what you guys think. All right, so play the clip. That was, that was like 25. What age would you tell the women? I ain't asking about you. And I'm trying like to it. answer it, but you won't let me answer no, it. No, I just need you to give me the age. I don't need I don't need the background. Give me the age. Between they're they're, they're between the ages of 21 and 50. What age? If you want to get married and have a family, what age did they start prioritizing? You allow age? me to answer, Kevin. Cause yeah, you no, you I'm I'm allowed you to give me an age. I'm gonna <laughs> end this conversation. I know a girl that had a baby at I'm gonna allow you to give me an age. Age range. I my I Kevin, right. oh my god. It was All not right. talking to you. Yep. Since you got this is why they, this is why they're not listening to you anymore. This is why. This is a woman talking about our running relationship channel, and I asked a simple question. At what age would you tell women to start prioritizing? They don't want to tell you. 
All right, so that so that was the clip. So that was a clip in conversation I saw. So if you guys are not familiar with uh, Kevin Samuels, but uh, he had a relationship uh, channel, and uh, the fellow lady was a, a dating relationship coach uh, for women. So they were having a conversation because there's a lot of women. I don't know if you look at the statistics today, but I think there's a lot of women today that are single um, in their thirties and don't have children. So the conversation is when should women prioritize themselves if they do want to attract a relationship, a man and build a family. And for Kevin Samuels, because from a biological perspective, he was saying if women want to build a family, want to have children, attract a good man, they should prioritize that when they're, when they're younger, when they're more, uh, when they're younger, when they can have those things, especially from a biological perspective, but uh, she was disagreeing. She couldn't give him a number. So um, it's uh, it's something I see uh, online that when we have conversations about dating and relationships, I think a lot of times what I what I and this is my personal perspective, my observation. A lot of times when we have these conversations between dating and relationships, there's no conversation about the differences between what men and women look for, especially from the biological perspective, because we're both different. A lot of times when we have these conversations of, of, of the dating struggles, uh, what I do see online is uh, we don't, there's a, there's a, there's a, I think, I think there's an assumption, I think from, from what I, what I see from the women's perspective, <laughs> that we're both looking for the same things and we both have to, we both have the same uh, uh, dating path and journey because we can both get a partner. We can both find anybody we want we can, we can have children, but I think there's a missing conversation of the, of the harsh truth that, uh, that we're both different, especially men and women. And there are things when it comes to our biology that we both look for. And there are also things that can affect us, especially when it comes to make, having a family and dating and attracting a partner. So, so, um, and that was, so that was the clip, uh, that was the clip that I saw online and there was a big conversation online, but that was just one aspect of it. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's, that's just something that I saw, saw online. And it's something I do see that, so, uh, you know, men and women, we are different. We have different things we look for. We also have different biological, uh, needs and things that we need as, in order to fulfill our family. And but we do live. I do see today, especially in modern society, that there's uh, there's this assumption that we just deserve any partner. There's a, we just it's gonna come whenever that time comes. Like it's like a more of like a fairy tale perspective that if you just live your life and then and uh, you might get your you may, you can start a family at 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and that partner might come anytime you want. You just gotta manifest and believe it all uh, wholeheartedly in your mind, and all of a sudden that's supposed to happen. Uh, I think from my perspective, I kind of disagree with that. I think there's different things men and women are looking for. And if you want to attract a, cer a, a certain outcome of a woman or a certain outcome of a man, then you really have to align yourself with the specific needs of that person to get the best outcome you want. You can't just expect uh, to not pay attention to what men or women are looking for and think that you're going to attract the ultimate family or ultimate husband or wife or an outcome that you want in your relationship. And that was just one aspect of it on that clip, but there's a lot more that we're going to talk about tonight. But uh, I want to, that's just my observation. And that's why I want to talk about it. Do men and women accept the harsh truths of their dating struggles? A lot of times when we have conversations from, uh, from both sides, you know, men talk about their dating struggles, but a lot of sometimes, sometimes men don't get the harsh truth of reality of why they're not getting the outcomes they want or why they're struggling with dating and, and vice versa. Sometimes women talk about their dating struggles, but nobody has really had to have a conversation and gave them the harsh truth of like, look, this is exactly the reason why you're not getting the partner, the family, the outcome you want. It's not uh, social media or it's not, you know, because of your city or, you know, it's not because all men are, are bad or terrible. All men are, are trash. You're probably not doing certain things, uh, certain, you know, uh, acting certain ways that may repel the very things that you're looking for, the very outcomes you want. So we got to have like an honest conversation. So, um, but that was it. That was just uh, the clip. I want to pass it to you guys. And there's a lot of things we're going to discuss tonight based on that. On that, um, If you want to, uh, if you want to react, you know, let me know what you guys think about that, that quick clip. And also what's your opening statements and thoughts about uh, do men and women today, do we, you know, there's a lot of people out there struggling with dating, especially for both men and women. Uh, do we really accept the harsh truths um, of why we're not getting the outcomes we want, and why we're not getting the family we want, of why we're not getting the man or woman or husband or wife 
uh, we want do we are we really accepting that or do we just think that it's just gonna come if we just wait you know it's just uh like uh it's like a fairy tale it's just gonna it's just gonna come one day and fall in your lap and you're gonna live happily ever after um let me start with you uh madison because i know you've been married for uh with your boyfriend i would like to hear from your perspective which is kind of unique so madison uh yeah um if you want to what's your response to that clip but also what's your opening statement do you think men and women today do we really accept the harsh truths of their of why people are struggling with their dating okay first i just have to say why is it that i always get picked first i don't <laughs> mind i really don't i'm happy to go but it always happens this way so i guess let me know if i go on too long because i have a lot to say okay do men and women accept the harsh truths of their dating struggles in my spare time and kind of for, for fun, I, well, okay, this is like layered, but I actually am a fitness instructor and I teach Pilates and then I coach at a gym called F45. So I was in front of like hundreds of young people every morning, just kind of like getting to know them, observing their personalities. And I just felt inclined because I'm nosy that way to start setting them up. I'd just be like, hey, do you want to talk to that girl over there? And then they'd be like, yeah, I want to talk to that girl. So I'd be like, hey, do you want to talk to that guy over there? And then I'd end up kind of just like pairing them together and setting them up. And it like was a fun way to play mini matchmaker, right? And so in that process, I like obviously was paying attention to people and trying to like see who would be a good fit and understand like, why are they still single? So I was paying a lot of attention to those things. And like, I think I'm pretty intuitive and I ask a lot of questions with people. So I could figure out different things about people. And ultimately what I've decided is that you are not going to find your person or the right person until you are the right person. So you have to be, in, and you're never going to be fully complete without your other half, right? Which I do like very much believe in like the fairy tale version of love because I've experienced it. But you yourself have to be whole and complete enough to be the right person. And until you accept all of you, you and yourself, then you're not going to be that right person. So I think people probably do struggle with accepting themselves and until they accept themselves then they become the right person and then that right person does find them and it like it happens yeah. and i've matched successful matches and it happened in my own life all right thank you so much uh madison all right i appreciate that uh we'll keep it moving uh i see you guys in the live chat jane spitfire lord punisher i see you guys watching this on the live chat thank you so much i see the viewership going up yeah don't be a ninja watcher y'all uh, let's get active on the live chat. Say hello and uh, let me know what do you guys think about uh, do men and women accept the harsh truths of of their dating struggles. But let's let's get active on that live chat. All right, uh, I pass it to you, Katie, because I know you uh, you responded on the on the uh, private chat. So, but go ahead, Katie. Do uh you know if you want to react to that uh, that video, but also what's your opening statement on the do men and women accept the harsh truths of their dating struggles? Yeah, I'm over here. I like I have strong feelings, and that was a very good word, Madison. Thank you for that. Yeah, I like to, I say I like to have conversations where psychology, science, and the Bible meet. And believe it or not, they agree on a lot of things. And there's a study on this specific conversation um, where they, they call it cornerstone versus capstone marriage. Your cornerstone is like when you get married young, you are young and dumb and broke together, you figure life out. This is typically how most of our grandparents got married. And capstone is like, okay, let me get my finances together. Let me get my career together. And, and which one is better? Now, I, I don't want to say there's a blanket statement to this because obviously it's better to get married when you're 40 if, if that's how long it takes you to find the right person. However, the studies show that your cornerstone, getting married young, dumb, dumb and broke, has a better longevity. Because think about it. When you were learning how to unload the dishes together and make the bed you just you don't become as set in your way. Like this is how we do it together. This is, we're building how we do things together. Again, I don't. I understand how to be frustrated by being nailed to a, an age because I don't think that that's because we all live different lives and there's so many different circumstances for everyone. But 
but there is that interesting study about cornerstone versus capstone marriage. And then the other thing I love what you said, Madison, that like become who you're looking for is looking for the way I say it, because we have this, as you said, just this idealistic Disney. Oh, I'm just going to sit around. I saw another video. It's funny. I thought you might've shown this one. It was a very overweight person. And she was like, I must have a guy who's really fit. And it's like, <laughs> like how, how do you expect that, you know, that to be sitting around eating Cheetos and Mr. Like six pack is going to come sweep you off your feet. Like <laughs> I'm all for having high standards, but we need to also look in the mirror and are we becoming the kind of person we want to attract? So there's a lot to unpack, obviously, but that's my hot take. So thank you. Do you mind yeah. if I back? What to say, Madison? Do you mind if I like respond, kind of, and just like add to it? Oh yeah, yeah. Let me let me just uh, we'll, we'll, let me just go all everybody, and I'll come back to you first, all and right. then we get to uh, respond. Yeah, yeah. I, I got react. you. Yeah, right. Divide it down. Okay. But uh, yeah, the, the girl that's uh, overweight, uh, Katie, she definitely needs some harsh truth. Uh, somebody to tell her the harsh truth from reality. Um, but. Uh, I'll pass it to you. I'll keep it going. Uh, I'll pass it to you, uh, Miss True. Uh, you know, oh what's your response to that video? But also, what's your opening statement on the do men and women accept the harsh truths of their dating struggles? They can. Some do, some don't. So um, I have accepted my harsh truth is that I have done the work to improve myself and become who I need to be. And I think that I am no longer willing to accept people into my life who aren't doing the work on themselves. So I've come to that realization. Um, in male or female, either you do or you don't. You're either, you have the blinders on or you have them up. So if you're doing that work, you know what you want, you know what you're gonna accept. I don't, I've never been part of any, um, professional relationship advice. Um, I just know what I know from me. If that okay. makes sense. <laughs> All right. I, I have to say, I'm a single mom. I have been single for quite some time now. My son is 12 years old. So I have to be cognizant of who I do allow into my life. Um, I know what I'm, I know what I bring to the table. And I expect the same in return. Get it, girl. Get it. <laughs> okay. um, for instance, I am a single mom. I don't get child support. I just purchased my first house this year or last year in April. So it'll be a year coming up. And you go on these dating websites and there's guys my age and older who are 38, 39, 40 with zero children saying that they might want kids someday. Well, then it's not going to be with me because I'm almost 40. <laughs> you know, I'm more than willing to accept uh, other people's children into my life. But if, if they don't know where they're at either, there's no gray area for me at this yeah. point. So. Okay. Yeah. All right, fair enough. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Miss True. All right, uh, we'll keep it moving. I see you, Bless Music, on the live chat. Uh, Kasim, good to see you on the live chat. Yeah, you guys are starting to get active on the live chat. Let me know what do you guys think, but we'll keep it moving. Uh, I'll pass it to you, uh, Amber. Amber, go ahead. So what's your reaction to that video? And also, uh, do men and women accept the harsh truths of their dating struggles? Go ahead, Amber. Um, so my reaction to the video is that I think the gentleman kind of wanted a definite blanket answer about what age women should start looking into that. And my opinion is there's not a blanket answer for everybody because everyone wants something different in life. Some are career focused, some are family oriented, some want to go figure themselves out and travel and do things before they feel like they need to fully settle down and do things and that's okay. Everyone's different. And um, I, I kind of want to tone in on what the other ladies were saying as well. Um, you know, in my situation specifically, I've done a lot of inner work. I've healed, you know, I've been through the toxic relationships and, um, you know, I know what I have to offer. And the kind of thing that I seek in a person is 
if I can't get it for myself, I won't expect another person to do it for me. So I want to be of equal value um, looking for a partner, you know, someone that's headstrong and knows what they want. Um, but I also think that people don't really accept the harsh truths. People have high expectations. They want people to do things for them. Um, they want to be taken care of. They uh, There's nothing wrong with that, but it's it's a give take kind of thing you can't just keep taking you have to be able to give as well and i feel like a lot of people especially in the dating scene um which i think has caused relationships to go bad because it's so casual and short term these days making dating hard for those that want long term they just you know they continue taking and it, it's not of equal value at least that's how i see it from being in and out of the dating pool but um, you know, at this point, I'm willing to just stay single if it means I bring peace to myself and doing what I want. So that part. <laughs> All right. All right. Appreciate it, Amber. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll keep it moving. I see you, Joe, in the live chat. Good to see you. Um, I'll pass it to you, Anna. Anna, go ahead. What's your uh, reaction to that video? But also, what's your opening statement on do women and do men and women accept the harsh truths? Go ahead, Anna. Yeah, um, thank you. I agree with Amber. It, it's definitely impossible to give an in specific age of when we should start preparing for if we want a family. It depends on our goals, our mindset, like what are we looking for, and what do we have available, right, for for us. But at least in my case, like I now decided that I do want to have children at some point. So like I'm 26, so now I know that I have to start looking for a serious relationship, a partner that um, aligns with my values and and the way that I see life. And then we can start building and taking it from there. And in regards to the acceptance, I believe that acceptance comes with time, because I feel like we we humans are naive and hopeful that oh I'm gonna find the perfect partner I'm gonna I'm going to be happily ever after but when we go out there into the world and we realize how harsh it is it's like okay so it's not like the movies it's not like the shows uh painted now it's time for me to do the inner work to see what it is that I'm lacking and to bring something better to the table so first you have we have to see what is out there and then we accept that hey maybe i do need to do some inner work in order to be the person that i want to be for my person okay all right uh thank you so much all right appreciate it and there is a uh, just uh, everybody on the panel i don't know who, i don't know who it is but i think there's a sound in the back so uh can everybody just put yourself on mute and then when you do speak just uh unmute yourself uh, but i do i hear a sound in the back that's uh coming on the screen but uh thank you so much anna i'll pass it to you uh niha niha what do you think so i have a completely different perspective uh specifically because i'm east indian um i don't know if you guys know anything about uh, arranged marriages it's a very big thing in my culture and honestly to some degree it's still prevalent uh like my cousin recently she had an arranged marriage and um she's like like really really happy in it um, and then on the flip side i had another cousin who had what we call is love marriage or the marriages that we choose um so it's interesting because how marriages or relationships were approached back in the day when there were um arranged marriages was essentially the parents would get to know the family and they would get to know the person you want to, or they're looking to get you married to. And then you would, as a woman, say, yes, I agree or I don't agree after you meet them and talk to them. Um, in comparison to now where we, uh, you know, meet people on our own, unfortunately, there's that gap that generations have skipped because um, if you're anything other than Indian, Asian, or Arab, then you are, in a sense, taught how to date. But in my culture, you're not ta taught how to date. So it's that layer of confusion where, how do I find that partner? How do I know if I'm 
uh, able to understand how to find that partner. So in terms of accepting the harsh truth, I don't think that registers on your mind at all as to um, what essentially what kind of truth it is, whether the truth is if it's your personality that's lacking or if it's the other person's personality that's lacking or if it's your environment that's not conducive to you finding a partner. All right. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Nihab. I uh, thank you for sharing. And uh, I'll pass it to you, Big Dog. And after Big Dog, I'll uh, bring it back full circle um, to the panel. So that way, if you want to respond, I know Madison, you want to respond. So uh, go ahead, Big Dog. Oh, am I good? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, do men and women accept the struggles of their dating? I would say they don't want to. They, they they don't want to. I think men don't want to accept it because they're, they're still holding on to tradition, which is dying out day by day. And instead of uh, embracing modern women, they want to hold on to something that's no longer existent. So I think that's their biggest struggle is that the women of yesteryear do, does not exist anymore. And with the women, I think their biggest struggle is being in a long-term relationship or a marriage and also having to change who they are now with, as, a, as a single woman into being something more as a married woman. You have to be something different when you get married. And I think their biggest struggle is they don't want to do that. They want to be able to be, they want to be able to be married and be who they still are while being married. And I think that's a big struggle for them too. So they don't want to accept the fact that they have to change and adapt and adjust to what's going on in 2024. And as far as the age, if you want to get start a family at 18, go ahead. If you want to try to start a family at 32, go ahead. Is there, there's no real age limit on when to start a family. Just know that you can't wait till you're 55 to start no family. That's, that's crazy. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that's just how I feel about the situation. All right, thank you so much, uh, Big Dog, <clears throat> uh, Damien. Thank you for jumping on as a, as a guest. Uh, I'll, let me well, let me hear your opening thoughts, and then I'll pass it to the panel for uh, um, to respond to each other uh, for open discussion. But uh, Damien, yeah, what do you want to add on? Uh, you know, do men and women do we accept the harsh truths of the of our dating struggles? Uh, the answer is going to be no, because everybody wants to hold on to this uh, adversarial dynamic where the men blame the women and the women blame the men. And nobody wants to realize that they are most likely the reason why they aren't single. I think a lot of people don't realize they need to step back sometimes out of the whole dating game and kind of develop what the foundation of their values and kind of try to find people that their values align before they start dating. They just go up there. The social media, I think, and you know, me and you be on I'm on your panel a lot. And those social media, I think, is a huge uh, uh, negative impact on the dating scene because it perverts uh, the idea of what uh, women should be and what men should have. Uh, it's one of those things where that uh, uh, and it, it pushes people to vigorously go after everything they want before they take the time to figure out what they really need for long term relationships. So. Uh, so, yeah, so, so I think nobody is really uh, uh, accepting the harsh truth about what's going on out there. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Damien. Uh, but yeah, thank you for everybody for uh, your opening statements, uh, for opening statements. Thank you so much. So let me just open up real quick for uh, open discussion. Uh, if you want to respond to somebody, I know Madison, you wanted to respond. Uh, I'll start with you. Go ahead, Madison. I Are you on mute? You're on mute. Hi. I was just talking away and nobody could hear me. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. I'm a lawyer. So like I'm a nerd. I literally took a page of notes, you guys, and I have so much to say. So just roll with it. All right. If you need to pop in a uh, little, just cut me off. Yeah. Okay. Good, good. Okay. Katie. Hello. Um, you're so cute. So you teach in sororities. Okay, I can a thousand percent see that for you. You literally remind me of the girl that was like across the hall from me. Like you literally <laughs> remind me of her. And it's so cute. I love it. Um, this is what I wrote down for you. So that cornerstone marriage. 
and thinking about that. And I kind of like preface, like I got to marry my very first boyfriend. I was 18 when I met him and I was just very dedicated and driven to going to law school. So I basically just said, no boys, like, I don't have time for that. Like I was very on my path and I got to college and he really did just like the universe presented him to me. Like it was that simple. And I paid attention and I was like, okay. And that was it. And we got married five years later on October 5th on our five-year dating anniversary. So I feel like I played that cornerstone marriage. Like I didn't do it intentionally if I'm a planner. And so I probably would have said, okay, at 30 years old, that's when I'm going to get married, married and like start doing that whole chapter. But like, I didn't set a date for myself and I ended up in that cornerstone marriage. And so I like, I don't have an opinion on which one's better because I haven't done the other. Right. And so I've only done the kind that I've done. So I just wanted to share my example of that. Do you feel like that kind of like fits in with how that's defined? Oh yeah, for sure. And I almost like I'm hesitant to share that study. I mean, obviously it was a study there's backed up. Like this is what there's so many odds and variables when it comes to longevity and marriages, of course. Right. But you know, of all the factors constant, those things considered cornerstone did have better odds. So yes, you yeah, definitely. That makes me feel good. You know, like that makes me feel happy. Like it at least gives m- the people who are like me, like hope that, wow, we did, we did something good, you know, like, well, I think we will last. It gives us hope to want that in life. Yeah. And again, there's so many factors, but we look at like generations before us and again, a lot to unpack, but most people date the person they thought was cute when they were 18 to 25 ish, right? They date, they got married, they lived hopefully happily ever after. Now we swipe, swipe, swipe through thousands of options, but are we really better for having more options? So things to think about. Interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the question is, Katie, is it, is it an actual option or just a perception of options? You sit there and be like, okay, you know, I re- and I'll tell this story before I'm Will. It's like, I remember back, I'm a little bit older. Let me, I know everybody get a little short, but let me get a little short about me. I'm 49 years old, uh, uh, manage a software sales team, and I've been married for 16 years. Uh, I remember back when I was younger, many moons ago, when uh, it was, it, you, you didn't see just beautiful women all the time. You saw pretty women, you saw cute women, but you didn't really see beautiful women all the time. It was a big thing when a beautiful woman crossed your path. Now you can pick up your phone and you see 50 of them in one clip. And now you just think, okay, I have access to these beautiful women for some reason. So you really start to think, okay, I don't need to deal with our stuff. I don't need to put it in work. And it's vice versa too. Same. And you know, I'm not just going to put it on the men. Women can say, when, when was the time you like really saw a really rich guy, you know, or, or a guy that was super handsome. It was like one of those things where now it's like, oh, you know, I, I have access to these rich guys. I have access to these handsome guys. So I can, I can just like, you know, not really put in the work and their effort uh, to, to make this thing, uh, last and make things better or what have you. And I think, and that's what I'm a big proponent of people staying away from social media when it comes to setting expectations of what they should have and be like in life, because it's really just a, a, a path to nowhere. Okay. It's funny that you say that because, um, one of my friends, uh, he's like, I guess in his forties and he went on like a couple of dating apps, um, like Bumble and something. And he was like, he, he's a decent looking guy. Um, and so he's like, it's crazy because you go through like a hundred or 200 pictures and there's like all these like gorgeous women. And then he's like, I feel like even if you do match with them, first of all, you get a hundred people that you're attracted to. And then out of those hundred people, maybe 50 will have that attraction back to you. And then how many people will go out of their way? to actually have a conversation with you, which is what Bumble is, where the woman instigates the conversation. And he showed me his profile and he's like, it's annoying. The women who do have a conversation with you are literally like, hi. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. All right. So uh, uh, thank you. uh, Shout out to the panel. Thank you for your responses and shout out to the live chat. So I I do want to bring this up. I I guess I have to be the first one to bring up uh, the harsh truth. Uh, for everybody. Um, I, I want to bring up this first one and because uh, this is my response. Um, 
I want to talk. I want to talk about the age thing. You know, the age. When should women start a family? That's always a debate that I see online, where a lot of people have may disagree and agree. But um, I know, I know, Miss True, you said it was a blanket. I think Anna, um, you said it was a blanket. Uh, women can, you know, start a family at any time or uh, find a partner at any time. But before I, um, before I, I say what I have to say, I want to ask the ladies real quick. Do you guys like masculine men? 100%. Okay. Definitely. All right. Uh, do you guys like a man that's, uh, that's a leader? If he is a leader, though, he has to know how to yeah, lead. A man that it's knows not how just to lead. about bossing you around. It's about yeah, I'm actually not talking being about, a leader. Yeah, I'm not talking about being a tyrant, you know, yeah. being trying to um, control you, but I'm talking about a guy that leads by example. Right. Uh, he knows how to lead. He knows how to communicate. He's a great he has the traits of a great leader. So do you in your relationship, ladies, you also you want a masculine man, uh, but you also want a man that's a that's a leader. You don't want to lead a relationship. You want the man that's going to be decisive. He has a plan. He has a goal. He knows he has standards for what he wants in a relationship. And, he, and you're willing to believe and trust him that he has a he's going to give you the best uh, quality future that he can give you. Is that is that the man that you want? One hundred percent. I would say yes, but I would I would also like my opinion to be taken into consideration. You know, because I have a brain of my own. I can make decisions. I trust that you're a good leader, but you could also trust that I have the skills to lead us the right way as well. Yeah, yeah your insights are going to be integral to the success of any direction he's taking the plan. He's taking you guys. Yeah, he's going to consider. I mean, and also just to that's something that I always hear from a lot of you know women today that uh, just because a man is a leader doesn't, doesn't, necessarily, doesn't necessarily mean he doesn't listen to your input. A great leader will always take feedback and input from the people he's responsible for, especially if it's, if it's, uh, if it's his wife, right? So, Definitely. yeah. So, so um, ladies, so on the ladies on the panel, you guys all agree you want a masculine man and you want a man that, 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 that leader? I have to say, actually, I want somebody who's balanced energy between the both and that balances my masculine and feminine energy because i have both and so do they and it together you have space to lead one another in different ways okay that's fair enough so I for you to say that that you want you more you want more I have balance? enough masculine energy myself i've been stuck in my own masculine energy for quite some time mm -hmm. i don't even know what it's like to have my feminine yeah feminine energy anymore i am always making decisions i'm single i'm a mom yeah. No one makes decisions for me. Nobody does anything for me. I'm the doer. I'm the man of the household. I'm the woman of the household. Yeah. There's no balance. So okay. I think for me, I would need somebody who can take me out of that energy and allow me to be in my feminine energy, okay. to be honest. Yeah. Right. And I know I'm strong. I would need a man that can handle a strong woman. And I am shy. I saw... <laughs> I saw somebody say I'm shy. I'm shy until I'm not. Okay. Bye. Right. I, love yeah. I, love <laughs> Listen, I think there's something to say about uh, the type of person who is able to lead but also be led. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can't always be leading. You can't always be the person who's led. Like it always has to be that delicate dance where there's always communication, where there's collaboration, where there's respect for your partner's capability to make their own decisions. Okay. That's the, well, yeah, that's, I understand that. Uh, Niha. Okay. So, but for the most part, I think, uh, I think Anna, Katie, Miss True, Amber, Amber, you want, you like masculine men. You like a man that, that can lead and also let you be in your feminine. Um, yes, I definitely agree with what Madison was saying as well, that you need to have that balance between the two. You know, like they people always say relationships are 50-50. Personally, I think relationships are 100-100. So when someone else is off with their energy, you're giving that 100 not only for yourself, but for your partner as well. Because like I mentioned earlier, everything is not just, you know, get uh, take and take. It's a give-take kind of thing. And, you know, you want a partner that can balance you out. So having someone that can also be able to be feminine energy in a healthy way you know 
um, and balance that with the masculine energy. I think that, that that's that's something that I would be interested in. Yeah. All right. Can I so, also say one more thing. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I also feel like with the word um, leader and leading, um, it connotates um, submission, right? So I feel like, oh, with the balance that Madison was mentioning, it shouldn't always be one person submitting to the others, to the other person lead. It should be like you, I submit to your needs, you submit to my needs, and we lead each other to the right way or to the right path because it's not fair. Somebody's needs always being met and the other one is okay i'll just follow your lead that's that's a recipe for disaster i think okay. a real leader isn't gonna take that away from you either though i think yeah. that somebody who is yeah. supposed to be leading your way if, if you if you are submissive as a wife or as a partner i think that but they would respect that in you they're not yeah. just going to be yeah. putting you down yeah. being submissive doesn't necessarily mean you're a, you're a doormat the, yeah a true I'm the true nature of somebody yeah who is going to have my best interest in heart yeah, when we when i say when i uh just to simplify when i say leader ladies it means it's a man that has your best interests at heart and he has proven to you that he has your best interests at heart so when he makes decisions he always makes decisions for the for the benefit of the family but also your interests as well. So when whatever decision he makes, it's always to make sure that he benefits us as, as a family, as a unit. So, and he's already proven that to you where you really trust him. Like you have full trust in his ability to lead you because you know that he has your best interests at heart. All right, so that's, that's what I mean. But I'll, I'll, I'll come up, I'm gonna come to you, Madison, real quick. But I, I, just, I just wanna bring up the first harsh truth because I do wanna have that conversation real quick. So the first thing, I think we the conversation what I do see online is when should women have start a family and have children? And what I do see online, especially on the type of content I do see a lot of women consume from other women, it comes from a very progressive modern ideology that you can have children and and find your masculine man with those qualities at any time you want. But I think what we ignore in that conversation is your biology as a woman that women, you have a biological clock when you can have children. And also, for a lot of times, the things that we talked about before, there's different things that men and women are looking for. So if there's a man out there, you know, women, they, they generally like to date older men. And if for, for men, they generally like to date younger women. And then, I think, Katie, you brought up one thing. You know, if you want a man that's going to be a masculine leader, then you're going to be able to be, a, you have to be able to be submissive. But I think you also have to be able to follow his leadership. And I think Katie brought up one thing. The older you get, whatever it's a man, a man or a woman, oftentimes, and I think all of us can attest to this, when we get older, we're stuck in our ways, right? We get stuck in our ways. So the thing is, if you want a man, a masculine man to come into your life to lead you, he has your best interest at heart, then by the definition of the leader, if he is the man that's going to be leading the relationship, your part is going to be following his leadership and trusting his leadership. But the thing is, as we get older for, you know, 30s, 35, 40, it is really hard for both men and women, but we're talking about for the sake of the conversation for women to allow a man to come into your life and to take care of you. And also we have to add on the aspect of hookup culture and uh, casual sex. So if you're waiting to your thirties and forties, then women are still having casual sex. Then also the, there's also the risk of having children outside of a marriage, kids out of wedlock. So that's also gonna be another equation for that man. Does that man wanna come into her life not only to date an older woman, but also take the kids that she have with a previous man, previous relationship with a man that did not want to marry her. So that's all the things that, that that's why the conversation that, you know, we saw that clip with Kevin Samuels, that, that that lady was saying, you know, a woman can just go out there, live her life, have casual sex with random men without commitment, without marriage, and whenever she's ready, she can attract that man. But I think that's the first harsh truth that women need to accept and it's uncomfortable for a lot of women, but if you want the best outcome you want, the best way to do it is prioritize that in your 20s when you are the most best suitable from a biological perspective to have children, but also you're not going to be hardened by the, all the failed relationships and bad experiences with the men that you're going to have sex with that don't give you the commitment. So you're ready to open yourself up, not only your heart, but also be in your mind to accept and and follow that man's leadership but if you're just waiting to your 30s and, and, and 40s having casual sex 
with men that don't want to commit to you with the risk of getting pregnant and having children. And also, it's harder to have children when you get your 30s or 40s. I think that's why if you look at statistically, I think there's a study out there that shows, but uh, if I can pull it up, I'll, put, I'll drop it on the chat. There's a study out there that shows by, by 2040, it's predicting, I think 2040 or 2050, it's predicting that over 50% of women in their 30s are going to be single and unmarried. So if you look at if you look at the observation what we see online of of the results of what women are going through, if you look at the statistics and the data, it all points out that waiting later is not going to benefit you as a woman to start a family. It's not going to benefit you to attract a masculine man that has the leadership qualities to allow you to be in your feminine. And I think that's one of the harsh truths that women find it hard to upset because they've been told by social media, by the progressives, by the postmodernists, that it doesn't matter. You can live however you want to live, and you're always going to attract and still start a family later on. And I do agree there's exceptions. I do. There's always exceptions to everything. And I think a lot of times a lot of women would take that one woman in her 40s that found her, that found her, you know, found her ideal man. But that's always an exception. It's not the majority of women. So I know a lot of you guys didn't didn't agree with the uh, pushback against that. I want to bring it back to you guys. Do you guys believe in the harsh truth that if you do want the best outcome you want as a woman to attract the best quality man you can get and start a healthy family? All right. <coughs> the best way, the best time to do it is in your 20s, not in your 30s and 40s and wait. I'll, I'll bring it back to the panel. Uh, who wants to respond to that? I'll respond. I think it, it matters uh, how when you're in your 20s, you don't always make the best decisions, though, either. Yeah. So it depends on the individual person. If they are mature enough to, to enter into a family-type relationship, you're getting married, you're having children. And then later on down the line, I've seen the people who, no, no disrespect to anyone <laughs> married, but the people who've been married in their younger years and have children really young, they get to be my age and, and older and then feel like they missed out on life. They didn't have the fun that they wanted to have and all that kind of stuff. Um, it, I think it takes a different maturity level too. And, it, and the same thing goes for men because there's a lot of men running around that have multiple children with multiple women. And that's not very attractive to us either. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so uh, Madison, go. Go ahead, Madison. Okay. I want to ask you a question, Will. Sure. Yeah. Okay, I need you to like give me literally like your status. Like, where are you at? Like, if I tried to match you, like, what do I need to know? I need to know, like, are you single? What's your deal? Yeah. And and what? What you're looking for? What? <laughs> what <do you> <laughs> I'm asking. Like, this is what we're here for, right? Sorry, buddy. Like, I'm. By the like, end of this show, you'll know. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I don't mind answering that question, but uh, I, I'm just, uh, what does that have to do with the your point, your, the conversation on the point? We'll just answer the question and then we'll get there. Go with it. Go with the flow. Come on, come on, come on. Okay. I mean, look, I mean, I, 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 I am single and I'm, and I, and I do, I do believe in dating for marriage. I don't, okay. date, I don't, I don't go. That's what you're looking for. That's what you're looking for. Dating yeah. for marriage. You yeah. want to find a wife. I want to have, I want to have kids. A lot of kids. You want to have yeah. a bunch of babies. I love that. My husband wanted to have a bunch of babies when he met me. He was like, I'm going to be a dad, right? He knew that. That's so okay. okay, you're looking for marriage. Like, that's what you want. So that adds to all of this conversation, right? Like, that gives us perspective as to how to answer these questions. So, yeah, I just want to say that. And then I think Anna wanted to say something. Yeah, I just, <laughs> I just um, wanted to one. say, oh, sorry. Um, I just wanted to say something in regards to what uh, Miss True said. She said something about missing out, and um, I do see the point in that I actually ended a relationship when I was 19 because I felt like it was so serious. I said, like, I don't want to be 40 years old and feeling like I only dated one person and I didn't enjoy my youth. But I feel like we could still prepare for a family and for marriage while being single, all, all while, while enjoying our lives. You know, I feel like we could still work on ourselves, heal our inner child, the past traumas that we have, and still be able to not miss out. So I just wanted to point that out. That just goes right back to what I said. Like, when you're ready, you're ready. And that right person will find you because you are right. And I, I, I believe that. that. I definitely agree with what they're saying. I mean, it, everyone wants that direct 
one answer for all and everyone's bodies are different everyone's circumstances are different you know uh like anna said we're healing from trauma we're um you know i've been in many toxic relationships in my earlier 20s and you know it took some inner healing for me to become the person that i'm looking for i wanted something healthy and i want someone that knows how to communicate and not yell and you know i had to go do the inner work and become that person myself to offer that to someone else i'm okay. 30 i don't have kids and you know i'm, I'm never been married and it, it's not so much as i don't have options or there's something wrong with me it's more of I was, you know, I was career focused. Um, I was enjoying myself. I'm very well traveled. I do things I enjoy. Um, you know, I've dated around and with things like that, I just realized, you know, I think I'm going to focus on myself, make sure I'm stable and I have a good career. And uh, I, I've been so on and off with I want kids, I don't want kids. And I'm finally at the point where, OK, now I'm th I just turned 30. I want kids. And now so. I'm going to put myself back into the, the dating scene. Um, so I think everyone's circumstances are just different on what they want to offer a person, what type of life that they want. And I don't want to be a stay at home housewife. I want to start my own business in the tech industry. So I want to be able to be with someone that I could build with, you know, and, and find my equal in that. So I think everyone just needs to understand they need to find their equals and not have high expectations and not be able to not give back as well. All right. I, really you. Know, I know Big Dog. Big Dog, you wanted to say something? Go ahead, I, was, I was, I was going to ask the single women on the panel, what is y'all biggest struggle trying to find your perfect husband? What's the biggest struggle you have as a single woman? Hmm. Um, I would say that men have a very firm idea on women. They're not as open-minded this is for me i'm not speaking on other women you know i'm very open-minded as far as communicating and expectations um but when i talk to men they they have these toxic ways of you know i'm supposed to listen to them they're very so hard traditional or they're the complete opposite everything is split equally you know there's no in the middle we're losing a lot of traditional values which goes back to i still want some traditional values like a man leading but still having matched energy with myself um so i struggle a lot with i guess personality clashing and beliefs and i feel like those are really good uh conversations to have in the beginning of dating but i guess it's taboo to really talk about that on the early dates i i would advise you to get all this shit out in the open on the first mm -hmm. date I, I struggle with those conversations on the first, second, third dates. I, I guess why, it's well, So let me ask you a question, though. But by, by the third date, are y'all having sex? I'm sorry, what was the question? By the third date, are y'all having sex? No, I find intimacy very, like, I, I value intimacy. So I need a, com a connection with someone. So... If I don't even have a good idea of who you are by the third day, I'm not <clears throat> going to share my body with you. Okay, I believe okay. you you have energy attached to your body. So if I'm sleeping with someone and they have bad energy, I feel like I can my body will take that in. And that's how trauma and other things occur as well. Okay. I, I could dig oh. it. I could dig it. Katie, you just need to jump in there. It's like popcorn. Just take take the phone, the thing off mute, and just so start talking. I'm like Madison over here with my notes. Um, <laughs> first of all, um, <laughs> we talked about the health of thing. This is just a fun fact. I did a lot of work with a PhD of sexual health. A woman's the health of the woman's eggs can affect up to three generations at the at conception, which is just interesting. So just something to note. Just a little fun fact there. And a lot of people talked about. Oh, I, maybe if I get married young or maybe like look back, I'll, I'll miss my fun. And I'm like, I dated around. I like, listen, waking up beside someone, you know, don't know is not fun. Being hungover is not fun. Like my wish for my kids is what Madison had. Like you date, like what, no one wants more comparison and more heartbreak and more trauma and more comparison you know like what I say when I go to colleges is do you want someone to say hey babe I'm an expert on hundreds of women congratulations no you want him to be an expert on you and that's that exclusive exclusivity and less comparison and 
you know, like just not having to date the field. I just think, I think that's crap. No. So there. And also just want to add on to something that Katie said and, and what Anna said, and I, I want to respond to it also to Madison, but I, I hear this from a lot of women. They say, I want to have my fun, <laughs> right? I want to have my fun. So the thing is for me is you have to choose the outcome that you want. You can't have it both ways. And, and Damien, you're married for 19 years, right? Mm -mm, 16. We've been together. I, I, 18, I, I, 18. I'm married for 19. Yeah, 19 yeah. is big dog. 16. Uh, Damien said 16. One again, I, and correct me if I'm wrong, big dog and Damien. Does it take does it take a lot of work for a relationship, a long term relationship and marriage to, to work out? Yes. 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 So, Hell yeah, it does. Of course, it does. My problem with women who say I want to have my fun. You're not working on the things or the things that you need in order to make a relationship to work because it takes a lot of work for a relationship to work. So the thing is, if you're living single and having fun, drinking, partying, you're not doing the very things that's going to benefit the foundation of building a relationship. So you got to choose what you want. So if you if your outcome is I want a long term marriage, then you start have to work on those things to prepare yourself for marriage. But you can't have your fun and live your life being single in your entire life and then wake up one day, you know what? I'm ready for marriage. How are you going to be ready for marriage for something you've never practiced your entire life? And that, and that's my issue. You can't, you can't have your cake and eat it too. If you want to party, and have fun, then do that. But you can't say this, you can't have both outcomes. I want to live my fun. And, all, uh, and then when I'm done with living my fun and not, not and ignoring all the consequences of the decisions that you're going to do when you're having your fun. There's a lot of terrible things that you can do by drinking, all that stuff that you do when you go out there, when you have your fun, you, you know, you're not even considering the consequences of those things that can, that can happen. But the thing is for me is that's one thing I do see online is you, I, I can, I want it both. I want to have my fun. And then when I'm done, when I'm ready, I'm, I'm going to be ready to be a good husband. I'm going to be ready to go, to be a good wife when it takes a lot of work and oftentimes people who do that, when they find themselves in a relationship, they're not equipped with the, for the tools and the things they need to build a relationship. So they often fail. People who are really good at relationships, they took it that I think Damon and uh, said this, they've taken the time to take a, to step, take a step back from, from the dating world and work on themselves. What, what do I need to do to work on myself? So that way I can become a better partner. I can become a better person, but also be able to succeed in a, in a relationship and they've done the work and then when they finally attract that partner, they're kind of more prepared to go into that relationship long-term. But, but also, I also want to bat down the, like who says that you can't have fun in a relationship? Like who says you can't have fun in a healthy marriage? Who says you can't have fun when you find somebody that compliments you, that respects you, that loves you, that's committed to you, that wants to spend the rest of your life with you, that wants to have your best interests? Who you says go. you can't have that fun? Preach. All right. I think the society has convinced a lot of women and we live in a very hedonistic, materialistic society, sexualized society that's convincing a lot of women that the only way you could have fun is outside of a relationship. When deep down from a biological perspective, as we're social creatures, we yearn for partnership, we yearn for companionship. And I think a lot of times when you are living in your single phase, whatever phase you're going through, you're not you're not used to being with somebody that you have to be uh, you're not being used to being in a relationship. So when you finally go into a relationship and you've been living single for your entire, your entire life, you're not used to considering somebody else's needs because you've been, you've been focused on your needs your, your whole entire life. And I think it's a very individualistic, individualistic mindset that oftentimes produces very selfish people. If you've been doing it for a long time, but you finally go into a relationship, it's no longer about you anymore. It's about we. It's what do we need in a relationship? It's not about you. But if you've been living that way, that's why I have a lot of friends who live that way, it's hard for them to be in a relationship because they have to consider somebody else's needs, not only their own, but they're not, but they're not, they're not used to that. But um, I want to pass it back to you guys. I just want to respond to that. Uh, Madison, yeah. go ahead, Madison. Well, how old are you? What's up with the personal question? <laughs> you're you trying to match you up with some battle. <laughs> I mean, I'm, no, I don't mind answering, but say what's uh, what's what does it have to do with the, the response? Well, I'm asking, I have to ask you a question so I can ask the right question. How old are you? I need to know. Okay, I'm 34. Go ahead. You're 34. Okay. So what, you said a lot of things. Like you're gonna have to slow down, break this up a little bit more, so we can catch up, honey. But yeah. we, you said 
that women who are having their fun, they are, they're not practicing to be a wife. So I'm just wondering if you've been practicing to be a husband because you could be like, absolutely. You could be practicing to be a husband right now yeah. and that will make you a great husband. But also if you've just been kind of fucking around and having fun, you could also still be a great husband someday. And that goes for a wife too. But how do you know how to practice? Yeah, wait, 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 let me also, uh, okay. oh, but it depends on what you're, my, my, my definition of fun is not going to the bar and trying to hook up with random women on a casual, on a one night stand. That's not my definition of fun, which is what a lot of people's definition of fun for both men and women. My definition of fun is building something, building a legacy, creating a future. That's my definition of fun. So that's what I'm saying. It might, it's, I, I still have fun, but it's not the fun that we see today that a lot of women would say, I want to have my fun. And we all know what that means. Having yeah. casual sex. Uh, Amber, that kind of sounds like what you meant by having fun, right? right? Like you're going out and you're exploring and you're traveling and you're totally having fun and you're like staying yeah. like low key about it, right? Right, but I'm not going no. out to hook up with people. Yeah. I'm staying away from hook yeah, up. Yeah, having like a fun, healthy life, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm there, there, there's the one thing that has to happen though. If you're going to do that, that's fine. Like, like Will said, it's fine. And he, he referenced my situation. I've told this before. I had to really step away to like really wash the stain of, of the shit that I was doing off all the stench of it. Cause I was, I was out there like everybody. I was a player. I was out there just, just hooking up with a bunch of women and stuff like that. And then I realized at a certain age, like this is, this is unfulfilling and I'm and sad. It's like, I'm going to end up with a life that's desperate and dumb you know, if I keep this up. So I have to step away from and kind of divest from all of those things just to get the stench of who I was off because the woman I would want to have that long-term relationship wouldn't be attracted to the guy I was. They were, the woman that I, 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 I met and married was attracted to the guy I became yeah. with the work that I was done. And, and even though, um, like I said, you still, there's still some work you need to do in the marriage because there's only so much of the work you can do by yourself. Some of the work happens when you in the shits, oh, yeah. when you in the marriage. Some oh, of yeah. it, like, like I've been uh, married to my wife for 16 years. I would say we've been productively married for 11. Wow. The last awesome. 11 wow. years. Because we would like, I had to still, I still had to, I thought I had done the work, but you don't really know what work needs to be done until you're in the shits. Yeah, and then you have that. to realize that what's going. So yeah. it's just like, but somebody what 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 Will is referencing is like you can't say okay, today you know I'm wilding out, wilding out, wilding out, and tomorrow, all right, cut it off, what have you. It's just it just prolongs the the likelihood or or, or of you finding that somebody because that somebody is going to want to see that you are no longer anywhere near that person because they're not attracted to that person. They're attracted to the person that you are, you say you are, you're trying to be and all the evidence is showing that you've become, you've done the work. Yeah. So that's what it is. It's like, you you can say, all right, I don't wanna be, you know, screwing random guys or, or girls, screwing uh, guys, screwing random girls. But if you were last week, it, there's gonna be some work that needs to be done for a guy that's like, okay, I can take you seriously and invest myself in you and, you know, uh, 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 and, and Make put, 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 put my legacy and myself at stake by dealing with you. Yeah. Okay, when did you get married? What year? Oh, shit. Mm, don't get my on, two, 2010. Okay, so you were in like a different era of. Like, I hate when people say that. The game is the game. I swear the game that. don't change. The I game ain't never I change. I don't know what the early 2000s were like in that scene. Like, that sounds like a blast. I bet your wedding was like so dope. Was it super cool? Yeah, I want to know like the vibe, but the 2010 wedding vibe. What does that look like? I don't know. It was, it was a good, good wedding. <laughs> yeah. It was a nice wedding. What did you wear? Uh, a tuxedo it was at the Ritz Carlton in San Francisco. Ooh, yeah, that's it was, nice. It was nice. Uh, don't, yeah, my, 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 yeah. So yeah, I'm just I curious. Nia, yeah, I know, I know Nia, I know Nia had a, had something to say. Nia, you wanted something to say? So Damien, if you hadn't gone through that phase of you being a player, you wouldn't understand that that didn't work for you. Well, well, no, because that's that's so, so that's like, and you know, I got to commit crimes, and no, I don't want to go to jail. No, it, it, it's, it's one of those things where it's just like, is, is I could have, I, I knew what I always wanted to long-term. I always knew that I wanted to be 
a married person. I didn't want to have multiple marriage. And even though I end up with uh, 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 being divorced, I married somebody that I was in the party lifestyle with. It lasted all of 13 months, you know, because it's not about just wanting to be married and one of these things. It's about being the type of person who knows how to be married for a long period of time. You know, so, and that's how that's who I had to develop. You know, so it, it, guys, um, can I say something? About, go ahead, Neha. She, no, finish, finish, finish. Uh, Neha, you can finish. Yeah. I heard that you guys were talking about um, preparing to be a wife, or like learning how to, or practicing how to be a wife, or practicing how to be a husband before you actually were one. Mm -hmm. But how do you know what that looks like? You know what I mean? Per like, great question. Great question. You align yourself with people who have the type of relationship you want to emulate and they judge you, your actions and let you know, you know, you know, you may not be moving in the right way. One of these cats, I was in the military where there was this guy named Owen Roberts. He was in the military. Me and him used to box together in the Air Force and he was married. He was uh, had two, th three, two beautiful kids and then later three. And then I remember one time and I was, I'll tell this story too, when I had this wild night. I mean, guys would have loved to have the night that I had. And then I was telling him about it. He was like, I was, and I actually, the words came out of my mouth, but you know what? I, I just want to be like you, man. I just want to like a wife, you know, gives a shit about me, you know, cause I'm, I, I do all this wild shit and I wake up by myself, <laughs> you know? And then I was telling him, oh, but he was like, man, that sounds crazy. He was just like, I was like, but I want to be like you sometime. You know, I want to get married, have a great wife. He was like, do you? Cause the, you, you haven't done no work to like be attractive to that kind of woman. It's like, you still got that bullshit up on you. So I know no woman who's, who's trying to think long term will see you as the long term guy. Living and the way you live. So I, I struggle with too. Building on that is, I feel like you you date somebody, and I think people can only put on a front for so long. So my yeah. problem with dating is, I feel like it's hard to believe the other person is genuine, and that's what they really want to do. Because I know yeah. what I want. I know what I do every day. I work ten hours a day. I'm not out clubbing. I'm yeah. not out. If I am out, I'm doing hiking or. You know, my clubbing days are long behind, beside, yeah. long gone. Yeah. But I feel like you, you date people and they say that's what they want. And then three months down the line, it's a completely different ballgame. So I think. It, 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 go, I'm sorry. I don't mean to repeat me. <laughs> so I just think that's the problem for me is believing that people are truly genuine. I have a problem believing what they bring to the table. Um, yeah. I guess that's my word for the well, day, but can I, can I, what they're, can I ask what happens true. at three months, Miss True? What happens at three months? Like what shift happens? I don't, I've like never lived that life. You know, I don't know. I can tell you. Three months. They show the true colors. <laughs> it's yeah. Three you, months. you go back to the, you go back to the uh, negotiation table after three months. They think they've got you already, so they don't have to put on the shit, the, the fake shit anymore. They think they've got you. They've sleeping with you already. You've already express some kind of emotional tie to them. So they feel like I can just be the asshole that I really am, if that's him. Same way, with, and it goes both ways with women. Women can be like, I, I can really be the materialistic, you know, chick that I really am after uh, 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 three months. And I'm not saying it could be three months, could be six months, whatever. Yeah. But the easiest way to spot that is, number one, if there's no uh, plan for the future, if a guy who's just saying shit has no real plan for the future, if a guy says, you know what? I'm going to McDonald's in in, uh, in 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 six months. Okay, have you applied for a business license? Have you did what you do? You know, do you see these things that show you that he's actually putting the work to do these kind of things? And look at his friend group. If all of the friends are talking about chasing tail, and he's the only one not, he's probably chasing talking when when it, they girls come over. He's talking about chasing tail just as well. I'm like, those are things. The way that. The things that they are attached to, they can't hide for long because they just can't hide for long. Yeah. If they if they with players, you will see that their friends are player. If they have no plan for the future, you'll see that they have no real plan for the future. But a lot of times, men and women, they delude themselves because the sex is good or they're so hot or the person has money or the chick is pretty or, you know, they delude themselves. To There was a part I, I watched this show uh, called uh, Hustle and Flow. Where she's where where uh, 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 Taryn uh, Manning is saying to uh, Terrence Howard, like you know, I let you play with my head because sometimes my head needs to be played with. A lot of women and men do that. They let the person play with their head, even though they know the plan with their head, because they need they need to have that. They they don't want to give up the delusion that things are different than they are. 
Ignorance is bliss. Yeah, let me uh let me just read this super chat real quick and I'll pass it to you, big dog, because I know you said that you, you have a question you want to ask the ladies. I got you, big dog. Uh shout out to you, uh Fenso Jack. Uh with the super chats, uh Fenso Jack, aka Mr. Get Snow Cheeks. Uh five dollar uh, super chat. That's a rum bag. Uh, uh trained trained to be a wife question mark look it's basic psychology if you're moving reckless promiscuous and in out of traumatic uh traumatic relationships you struggle uh as a wife yeah yeah i think he was reacting to like we were talking talking about before a lot of women say they want to have fun yeah if you want to have fun then you got to realize that there are consequences from that decision uh i'll pass it to you big dog uh you, you had a question you want to ask the ladies i mean what you're saying was like just like i said in the beginning of the conversation is that a lot of women today they want the long-term commitment but they also want to stay who they are in the commitment and that's kind of hard for women to do because when you get with somebody that you really want to be with you're gonna have to change eventually you're gonna have to change for that man or that woman or whatever you're dealing with you're gonna have to change for that person and if you sit up here saying, I want to have my fun, but I also want to be in commitment, you got to make a decision which one more important. Either you want to have fun or you want to be in a relationship. Yeah. You can't have both. Yeah, um, I think the best, the best way to simplify it, uh, Big Dog, uh, it's a really great point. W women today, they want, they, want a married, they want to get married, but they still want to live single. That's, can that's I say thing. something? <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So I ahead. feel like that my statement caused a lot of commotion with the, I want to have fun, but people don't understand that that is a phase that most people go through it. Um, I, I believe Damien say that he knew he wanted to be a married man, but there's people that don't know whether they want to have a family, whether. Now, I was I mean, one of them people. I was one of them people. I didn't care. I was one before I got no, married. No, no, I, no, not you. I said uh, Damien mentioned well, that I'm he saying, knew. Me and Damien, I've been married longer than Damien. My story totally different. I didn't, I wasn't looking for a wife when I got married. I was, I had a roster. Okay. I had four, so... I had four or five females I was dealing with that i was just going through but that, but that didn't didn't that didn't stop you to this day to be a uh awesome husband I that you a, are i, had, I right? needed a new challenge i needed a new challenge <laughs> okay so to to what i was trying to say is that what would be wrong let's say if i started at 19 and i i broke up with with my boyfriend at the time because i wanted to experience other people other other time of relationship if i was doing that and I'm, let's say i'm 30 and i'm still doing that then there's a problem Cause I've been doing that for like 11 years. How much fun do I, do I want to have? But I did that. That wasn't for me. I was like, you know, yeah, I'm a person. I like long-term relationships. I want a commitment. I want a family in the future. So that is not for me. I will not wake up one day and be like, wow, I wonder what it would be to be with somebody else. I wonder how it, how life is with a different partner. Because I lived that phase of my life and it's over and I learned from it and I, I took my, my lessons and I moved on. Yeah. Okay. okay. Hey, but the, my, my only, my only thing is if you, if you, if you know that that phase didn't benefit you long-term, why don't you say to the people that's watching, you know what, even though at that time I had fun, but it didn't get me the results I want for everybody that's listening, you don't want to go have fun, figure out what you want. If you want to have fun, go have your fun. But if wait, you want wait, a relationship and a commitment, it's a different experience. I, they cannot live through my life. No, what no, yeah, happened to me? No, no, I, I know, I understand this. For for me, like Damon said, and Big Dog, I, like, I went through my my fun my fun times as a man. Now at this point in my life, I'm ready for a committed 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 relationship. If I have a conversation with a young man, he's saying, "I was, I just want to have fun," I would tell him not to. I would tell him, you know what? What do you What do you really want? Like, do you want a good woman? Do you want a wife? Do you want healthy children? He said, and if he says yes, that's what I really that's what I really want. Then I will that I will tell him, consider not going not to consider not having fun, but focus on that time that you will be spending having fun and to build and to work on yourself to make make sure that you attract the outcome that you want and be ready for to be a good man, a good husband, and to be ready for the responsibilities of a family. So even though I went through that phase myself, I would have recommend that to people. Uh, if they want to, if, if they ask me for that advice, oftentimes when we have people, who, uh, especially for women, they say, I have fun. You would recommend that for everybody. Go have your fun first and, and, and then and then get that marriage when we when you all knew already that when you had your fun, it didn't benefit you at all. I get the outcome. So why not? Why not push people to go towards the relationship 
and make sure that you can find the man that you want, find the relationship you want, and still have fun at the same time. You know what it is also? I feel like we humans take things for granted. And um, if we have that one thing, if we don't know any better, I'm like, oh, well, I have options. Now I can go and find me another person that will fit what I'm looking for. Yeah. But if you've been in the trenches, you know how bad it is outside. Like, I know what I have. I appreciate what I have. And I'm going to work towards my marriage. I'm going to work towards something a good future with this person because I know what's out there and it's not good. Yeah. Will, when did you figure out you wanted, to, you were ready, like to be a husband, to be a dad? Like you went through your fun, like you said, what, how old were you when you figured that out? Uh, I think I, I was probably 27, 27, 28. Beautiful. I think it's really, really sweet that you like came to that conclusion. And like, I can tell you from my experience growing up with my husband, because that was very much a benefit of knowing each other from the time we were 18. We've been together nine years now. And so we've grown together, which has been a beautiful experience. But honestly, like we all kind of go through our own journey, married or not, like fully in the game or not. We all go through our own journey of growth. We're in our 20s. We're in our young 30s. Like we're still growing up. I'm just a kid. I don't know about y'all, but I'm just a fucking kid. I don't like offer and stuff, but I'm literally a kid. And you grow up and it, my husband is 30 years old now. Yeah. And he says that his like big year of growth was when he was 28. Like he recognizes that like a shift happened in who he was as a man. He shifted to become ready to be a father. Yeah. Like we all have that women do have that where they need to grow to a certain point And then they know who they're going to be whether that's going to be a wife, whether that's going to be a mother, like we all have our own path to get to that. Yeah. And then your, your body, like your, your intuition, really your brain, your biology will tell you if you're ready or not. Yeah. I know. I agree with you. I think we, we all go through our, our phases in life to learn, but I, I think that's why when you look at back traditionally, there's always um, older people who can take advice from that's gone through our steps. So yeah, you, absolutely. right. So, for, so yeah, he's like, yeah. So for me, so for, I'm a little bit older now. So all the young, I have younger cousins and um, coming up. I've been through their steps. I've been through. I've, I've done what they've what they're experiencing. So I can give them some perspective. Hey, look, I know that's what everybody else is doing right now is having fun. But if you really want the outcome that you want, this is the best time in your youth when you have the vitality and the energy to put in that work to get the outcome long term. Yeah. I think that's beautiful. Yeah. Um, I have a quick uh, super chat from uh, Fencil Jack real quick. Uh, shout out to you. Um, not going to derail tonight. Just here to support before I back uh, go back into basement dweller hibernation. Uh, great show. Keep up the good content. I'm out. All right. Shout out to you. Thank you so much. And and then Madison, the, the one thing of we, uh, the one thing I, I would bring up, the re- about uh, having fun between men and women, there, there is a, a little difference between that. The thing is for me is, is, is um, for men, we don't have, we, we can still have children a little bit later. So we have some lenient, lean, uh, leniency for us a little bit. So even though we go through our fun in our, in our, in our twenties and we figure out things in life, but we still have a kind of a biological advantage that we can still have kids in our thirties and forties. Women don't have the guys that. on the dating apps, thirties and forties. Yeah. We, kids, yeah. But women, but women but, yeah. the same age as them. But women, women don't have that luxury. It's like exactly. your, best, your best time to have to build a family is in your 20s. So if you're having fun, so for all the women today that's having fun, partying, ca- participating in casual sex, they don't realize that the, the best power to optimization for themselves to have children and pick the partner would be right now in their 20s. I hope, I, I hope that man is choosing to yeah. optimize himself to be a father and all of those things as well, because it takes two. Yeah, yeah and, I'm, and, 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 and I'm not making excuses for men to have to have uh, to go out there have fun in the twenties because we can have kids later in the thirties. Now I still agree, men should use their time in the twenties to focus on the things they need to do to become good, strong men to be able to lead a family. Yeah. But I would, but I would, I'm not going to ignore the, bio, the the biology that you know there is an advantage for being a man is we can still have kids in our thirties and forties. Women don't, so you get, you have to prioritize more as a woman to build your family and have children, healthy children. In their 20s. Say it, Anna. Say it. I just want to say we have the biological factor, but men have that psychological factor because you're going to find 40 year old men with the mind of a 25 year old. So, yes, 
we have the disadvantage that our bodies change, but men will have to take and do the work to be the father, the husband, the provider, the leader that we need. The, yeah, the 40, yeah. The, the 40, let me, let, yeah, the 40 year old man with the minor 25 year old is not looking to be the husband, provider, father, what have you, because yeah. he hasn't done the work. Those yeah, dudes, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he, he don't want to be that. He like wants that. to. He oh, wants no, to be the man they, they are acting very much as somebody who want to be a father. No, they, no, no, they're trying to treat you like they just want some pussy. That's all. Exactly. Not, not, yeah, not somebody who wants to be a father, but they're they're participating in activity that will lead to kids and be a father. Yeah, so they don't want to be a father. They want to. They want to get a. They want to. They want to have an orgasm. They want to nut. I know the guys are all excited talking about. Let me just just ask a question to everybody. How many people here are older than 27? Like, just like I just turned 28. So, how, like, when you were younger, did you even have that mindset? Like, oh, yeah, I want to get married. Like, like that. I was married, girl. I was married. I was 23 years old when I got married. It's crazy. I wanted to get I wanted to get married. I want absolutely wanted to get married, but I aligned my I messed up and aligned myself with people who put it in who 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 were doing a different path. And it just looked fun to me because it was it was it was fun to me. But if I would have aligned myself with people who are on the path to getting married, having kids young, and whatever, I'm 49 years old with a six-year-old. What the fuck am I doing? You know, my friends are planning their trips to Paris. I'm planning my trip to Disney World. Yeah. You know, that's the difference. That's my reality right now. Nobody wants to be like this. I would have wished I would have done this 10, 15 years earlier. Yeah. Let me uh, let me just read a super chat real quick. Give me one second. Uh, shout out to you so much. Uh, Fancil Jack. Oh, also a kid after 21. Ha ha ha. I'm done. Well, at least we're seeing progress and they're not calling themselves a child after 18. Uh, that's wild, dog. Okay, uh, thank you so much, uh, Fence Hill Jack. Appreciate that. That's a joke. <laughs> yeah. Damien, I love what you said. It's a, but it's some truth to it, though. I was going to say, Damien, I love what you said about that. You know, you were on that reckless path, but then you had a guy kind of a wake-up mm-hmm. call a little bit, right? Like he was, like, do you really want this? I think that's so, that's, there's a book about this called The Principle of the Path. We, You know, people say, I want to run a marathon, but they never lace up their shoes. I want to, um, like, we say big things, but we don't, put in the work and then the opposite's true like oh i want to be married and have a family but i'm like dancing on the tables like you know that was me and so it's just what are the steps lining up to take you to the destination you want to go and this isn't complicated when we think about driving are you getting on the highway to go north or south but we think oh i want to i'm in tennessee if i want to drive to new york i go north we're like oh well i'm going to drive south and just see what happens like yeah it's complicated with directions but it is with our life all right. All right. So uh, thank you so much. Um, and does anybody want to respond? Anybody yeah. want to add on? I but, mean, I I got married at 21. So that was my first marriage. And yeah. then I got divorced at 27. And I felt like I was just like living through it. I, I, I just got married because I thought I was expected to. I was unhappy. And then therefore I got divorced because I felt like I was in that autopilot mode. And it wasn't like an intentional thing. So I didn't take the time to grow with it. Where Madison, you know, you were with the first person that you were with in the beginning and you didn't feel that way at all. Like you felt like this was like a a divine intervention from the universe and it was right for you. But now I'm with with a partner who's like completely the opposite and who I feel like I'm very like emotionally and uh, spiritually aligned with. And there's, I think, that huge difference between knowing the right age to get married because the right age is individual to your growth. And if you don't, if you don't take the time to grow and introspect, you're not going to find that right time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, Neha, I love that, and I'm sorry you got divorced. That's probably so sad. And like, I realized through my training job, actually, I got to talk to so many people around our age and I was like, fuck, like we're the ones doing this in, you know, in this era, in this generation now, like we're having really serious, hard things that we're all going through. And like divorce is one of them and it's okay. Like you didn't find your person the first time. And I guess just to to speak about like my experience getting married young, and I'm really honest about this. And my husband and I have a really beautiful, healthy 
relationship. And I'm super grateful for it because I know it's really rare to have the experience that I, I had, but basically like, wait, I forgot what I was going to say. You guys shit. <laughs> I do that sometimes. I'm um, sorry, but I'm just going to say, oh, I'm genuinely happy about my divorce because that marriage was not. Yeah, happy. I'm glad. I was yeah, going to yeah. piggyback on that. Also, sure. that maybe marriage wasn't for her and divorce was her yeah. the best decision for her life because yeah. people stay in a marriage unhappy for so many years and they don't become their true self. Yeah, fuck that. We don't do that. No, I'm so glad. I hope you're really happy. Oh yeah, and with, with what Big Dog was saying, um, he was talking about how like there's different um, degrees of masculine and, and you guys were all talking about how masculine men attribute to a sense of direction and, and leading. My first relationship was not that. And in fact, I was directly the masculine person, which in fact led to the decline, which is why I wasn't happy. Yeah. It's because it wasn't balanced, right? Like it wasn't balanced. I'm not being balanced. That fucking sucks. Everybody wants balance. Everybody. Yeah. I know it's crazy, but I don't know if there's. I, I'm 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 trying not to be a little bit touchy here, but like, there's a image on the internet. It's a meme, and there's this lady pulling, um, this amputated. Please don't get me wrong. There's this lady pulling this amputated person, and I remember sending my ex-husband this. And saying to him, "This is what I feel like is going on in my marriage." Wow! <laughs> yeah, that's fire, bro. Yeah. But, but, but then you got to figure out, okay, what happens when you feel like that? It, the, it, there's one or two responses to be like, it could be a, a defensive response, and it could be like, okay, let's dive into that and try to figure out what's going on and what you're not getting, what I'm not getting. Let's maybe you have somebody come in and give us a, some uh, some therapy or something like that. In order to get it. And my I'm wife and I, we went to therapy. There was, because he was a traditional man, but did not want to take on the traditional role of being the leader and the provider. I was the one who was the financial leader and the provider. Wow. The household. Um, that's essentially what yeah. it felt like. Yeah. Okay. I'm glad that, that bothered you. Mm -hmm. I'm the financial leader of my household, actually. I own a law firm and my husband works with my companies. So like that was very intentional and it just is whatever balance works for you. And I hope you find exactly what you want. And you said you had a good partner that you're excited about. So I'm really happy yeah. for you. I'm good. I, it's still good. Thank you. All right. So, uh, yeah. Um, uh, I, I, I just want to respond to one thing um, I remember Madison saying, and then uh, we can move on to the next thing because I have some things I want to discuss. Um, Madison, you don't know, so you. Uh, I, I think you said something along the lines that uh, whenever you're, uh, you, you don't believe in the age thing, right? The 20s and the 30s, whenever the time comes, you just find your man. Well, I don't necessarily say I don't believe in it. Um, but yeah, I think when you yourself are ready as a partner, to be a lifelong partner, which yeah. it takes a certain level of commitment, just like all you guys are saying, it takes a certain level of commitment and willing to show up as the person who wants to be a husband, the person who wants to be a father. Like you have to be, work to become that person and so do women, 1,000% yeah. so do women. And it takes time and experience to get there. So at the age that it comes to you and Will, you said it came to you at what, 27? You were 27. Yeah, yeah. That's so great. You were 27. Thank fucking God. It didn't take you till you were 35. Right. And you know, those people, I feel for them in, um, I live in Scottsdale, but we spend a lot of time in California and I found this out about like the LA guys, like the LA stereotype man, they call it the land of Peter Pan's literally 40 year olds who just want to play. And guess what? They can fucking do that. They can have their little fun. They can be 40 years old and yeah. do that. Lucky them. Yeah, women probably do have a lot of pressure. And honestly, um, I'm an attorney, right? So I have a very, I have a career and there's other women attorneys who go and take their career really, really seriously. And one thing that I've had female attorneys tell me is the one thing they wish they would have done is had kids younger and just know that they could work and have kids young. And they didn't need to wait until they were older to build up their career. So basically they just prioritize yeah. their career more and they thought it would be, better but they yeah. wish they had done it younger so that's like sweet advice yeah. and they say to go freeze your eggs which thank god we can do that these days 
Yeah. So um, when you say when you when you say things like uh, yet uh, just wait till you're ready. Um, yeah. I think you uh, um, from because of the biological clock that you have as a woman, you can't just wait till you're ready. So it doesn't take you. 50, you can't tell a woman, no, okay, even in, if it takes you 50 years to get ready. You know that's not gonna benefit you long term. Well, even if you're 40, 40, even if you're 30, so I, I, I think that sometimes the advice I think that's 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 not a really direct harsh truth to women. You know, just do the work when you're younger. Put in the work to get the outcome that you want. If you want a family, you want a relationship, start early. But the thing is, when you when you when you when you say things like "Oh, wait till you're ready," a lot of times then I, I hear because I've I've heard that same uh, statement from a lot of women. Wait till you're ready even if you're 30, 40, 50, but they're not considering the consequences as a woman, as you get older, not only by having a family starting and having children, but also uh, attracting the, the man that you want. So I don't well, think the waiting for ready, I don't, I don't think that's good advice for, for women to say, hey, wait, wait, you're ready because you're ignoring the, the biological clock that women have. And even for me, even if I waited till I was 35 to make these changes, just because of the, I, st I still would be able to, I uh, have children even in my 35s or 40, which is a lot different, but I'm not using that excuse to start younger. I think men should start younger to work to themselves to be ready for a relationship. But I think that that, that statement a lot of women say, just wait till you're ready. I think it, it, it puts, I think it, it puts women at a more disadvantaged position to not only have children, but also attract a partner. How old do you think women should be when they have kids? As, as early as they can, if, if they're willing to put in the work. Optimal, 24 can to 28. I, can I, because you've, uh, Will, you've said the word, do the work. I mean, you've said you've said the phrase, do the work multiple times. What do you mean by do the work? Could you elaborate on that? What do you, What is doing the work, in your opinion, from your perspective? Do the work means prepare for marriage. Be, prepare for the role of being a wife. How do you prepare for what? that? Yeah. Go, like Damon said, go to the people who have the outcome and the relationship that you want. So look at a couple that have the relationship that you want. You go to that woman. Traditionally, this was your mom. Traditionally, when you when they're in a in a household, you get this advice from your mom because you would see the the type of healthy relationship from your own parents. But I, unfortunately, today a lot of people don't have that luxury because there's a lot of single parents out there. But traditionally, you would this, this is the information that you got from from your from your wife, I mean, I'm sorry, from your mom, from your dad. If you want to learn how to be a wife, the first person to show that example would be your mother. I feel she like that's hard because of the time change. You know, time changes, generation, um, tradition changes. So going back to my, like my mom or my grandma that they had, you know, marriages, it, it probably, probably wouldn't always work. Well, what I'm saying, like Damon said, look, go, if, 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 the, if the relationship you want is not your parents, then go find somebody that has the relationship yeah. the outcome that you want and then, go, and, then go to, and then go talk to that, to that woman, to that, uh, to that wife and ask her, uh, how, how does she do it? You know, what are the things that she needs to do? And, and then what are friend? Yeah. yeah let, me, let, me like real, let me just finish it just finish this real quick, Madison. Madison. Yeah. So go to that go to that woman that you have the outcome that you want, Anna. Ask her, what do I need to do to become a wife? And then follow her. It's just it's just everything in life. You want to learn how to be fit, go find somebody that's fit and they'll teach you the, the things that you need to be fit. If you want to be financially successful, you want to be a lawyer like Madison, go find the people that have the outcomes you want because they have the life experience and they have the knowledge. So that's what I mean by doing the work. Right? You, if you don't you, you can't just wake up one day and randomly do something that you've never done before and expect it to work. You can't be single your whole life and just go into a marriage and a relationship and that you've never experienced before or you've never witnessed because you've never seen this from your own parents and expect to work. So by, by doing the work means optimize, put yourself in a situation to learn the skills that you need to make sure to optimize yourself to get the outcome that you want. That's, that's what I mean by doing the work. Mm -hmm. Well, everyone has different circumstances too. You know, people might grow up, you know, differently. You throw in culture, you throw in values, religion, all kinds of things. And, and I feel like what, no matter the timing, you have to do the work, no matter how much advice you get from other people. If you don't put in that work in yourself, invest that 
that work on yourself, it doesn't matter. You'll never technically be ready or, you know, uh, be prepared in any way. I, I believe that the people around you are a reflection of how you see yourself. If you're very insecure, you, you know, you've come out of toxic relationships and you're very, um, you know, just down on yourself, people are, some people will pick up on that and show you that, you know, some people might attract a narcissist kind of person because, you know, they believe that they don't deserve love or they don't deserve whatever. And I feel like if that's the kind of person you are, you know, because people are saying you should have kids in your earlier 20s or whatever, but if you're not doing that work, how are you supposed to get marriage minded at that time if, you're feeling that way. I feel like you really need to focus on becoming the person that you seek. So I, I feel like the age thing is really, it, it's very difficult. And I feel like you're, you're ready once you put in that work and you're ready to invest in not only yourself, but another person as well. Yeah. Let me, uh, thank you, Amber. Let me just read some super chats real quick. Um, Finso, uh, thank you so much for Super Chat, $10 Super, uh, super Chat. Uh, can someone please explain how happiness is the foundation of marriage? When did this happen? Happiness isn't a stable state. It's it's a transient, like trying to grab wind. Duty, respect, and sacrifice uh, is key. And also, uh, Fenzo dropped a Super Chat. Waiting until you're ready. Can you ever prepare and be ready to be tased? Nope, you have to get ready. <laughs> you're shocked by surprise. Otherwise, uh, you would just uh, pro procrastinate. Yeah, I mean, I don't like the term uh, you're ready because you'll never be ready for, for anything in life. You just start doing it. Uh, no, not true. Sorry, not true. No, because uh, no, what the from when you like, I think when people say ready, oftentimes they mean they're waiting for the perfect moment or opportunity to yeah, have the perfect circumstance in order to do something. You and can the definitely thing is, that. Well, right, I, I, mean, I think I agree. I mean, some people have a perfect, I think that's the exception, but for most people, <laughs> Life is unpredictable, but there's always shit going on. So if you're waiting for something to be yeah, perfect, it's you know, unpredictable for everybody, right? Yeah, everybody. Madison. Madison, what is what is waiting until you're ready? I, I, let's let's let's. Now what I'm about to ask, what is waiting until you're ready? What does that exactly. mean? Exactly. What does that yeah. mean? How do how would a person recognize that they're ready? In your opinion, I'm not giving you to speak on. You got just it. Your opinion. I'll tell you. Not only it's not my opinion; it's just my experience. Okay, so. Just take it for what it is. It, right? it, it, which your, your experience is, is what generates your opinion. Sure. Call it. So, okay. I get paid to give my opinion. That's my job, That'll actually, sure. as an attorney. <laughs> but I'm very okay. aware of that. Got um, you. This so, lady is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, my experience, how I know I was ready for something. And mm -hmm. these are markers in different areas of my life, right? Not just my marriage, not just my relationship. I have experienced readiness at different times. So basically, I said I was going to be a lawyer when I was 13 years old. I wanted a job where I could talk a lot, dress cute, and help people. Okay, those were my terms when I was 13. I got into law school at 23. But I took time in between going from college to law school. And take this with like a grain of salt. I grew up extremely poor. I was a first generation college student. I did it all on my own. And then I was a first generation lawyer. So like I was working my ass off to make this happen for myself. And so I knew that I wanted to go to law school someday. I knew that I wanted to be a lawyer someday. And I trusted that I would know when that time was. And it happened to be two years later. That's just how it fit into my life. And that's just how it all worked out. And honestly, like when it comes to being ready, I did get married, right? And I understand the resistance to that question in the sense of like, was I ready to get married? I have to ask myself that question even as a married woman, which is like crazy to say to me. I feel like a young person who is married, right? It's rare. And basically like my reflection on that is that in that moment, yes, my husband and I were ready to meet each other in the state that we were. And then we were going to continue to grow together to different states, one of which was engagement. And then the next one was marriage. And each one of those chapters were different. And we knew based off, so like, let's say we got engaged in April of 2018. Okay. We bought our first house. We got our first doggy and we got engaged in April of 2018. I think, I think that was a year. And it's hard to remember the things, all of them. It's fun, but you try. Um, 
So we knew that we weren't ready to be husband and wife, but we knew we were ready to be engaged. We were ready for that step. And so what we did, we were like, okay, we're going to set our wedding date for 18 months. And we had a nice long engagement because we were young. So we were taking our time. We were going slow. You know, you get engaged, you get married within like a reasonable amount of time. That's the worst. If you are engaged and you haven't gotten married for a long period of time and you're just not getting married, like just, just let it go. Yeah. Um, but basically we knew we were going to be ready by literally October 5th, 2019. That's the day we set our wedding. And then in that time of engagement, we worked on things. We battled it out until we were ready and prepared to be husband and wife, which was then a different phase. And so, like I said, we've had the experience of growing together since we were little kids, literally. I mean, like, think about yourself at 18 years old in comparison to the man that you are now. You are a kid. You are a fucking kid. I was a kid. We were all kids at that age. And that's what I mean when I say kid. Obviously, I'm grown up with houses and cars and businesses. Like, I'm a grown up. Don't get so what I'm getting is... You knew you wanted something. You did the work to make you were ready for it. You didn't just jump into it. You didn't just say, hey, I want to be married. We're going to get married tomorrow. You took some time to do the work that was necessarily to get to that point where you, you knew you could do it successfully. That's all that people are saying when you're saying doing the work. Like saying, if you're saying you, you're not, you can't just say, okay, I'm ready to have a, I think what a lot of people aren't doing that. A lot of people aren't saying, okay, I want to have a baby. Okay. Two years from now, I want to have a baby. They're saying, I want to have a baby you know, it's an tomorrow. It's an option. I'm just saying you can't. No, 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 I'm saying. I, I, I'm, just let, saying. Let, me, let, me, let, let me land the plane. Let me land the plane. All right. Basically, what I'm saying is like, what we're saying is, and what Will is saying is like, if you decide you want to have a baby, you can't just say, I want to have a baby tomorrow. Like the smart person, you can physically, biologically oh, do that, but you can say, I want to be married. Here's the steps I want to make. I want to make sure I'm financially stable. I want to make sure I have a home. I want to make sure my relationship is, is solid. I want to do all these things to ensure that my child will have the highest possibility of success, the highest likelihood of success and see for not just now, but in the in their future. So yeah. that's what we're saying. It's not about just deciding you want something. It's this, It's not about being convinced you want something. It's being committed to the process of doing it successfully. That's what yeah. all he said. I agree. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If you don't do the work, you can't just be okay. I'll be ready tomorrow without doing no work. Or, I agree. Yeah. Totally. And um, then the point, my point is that you keep doing work always. Literally. Yes. And that was like actually something I wrote down from you, Will. Yeah. You said men get stuck in their ways. Uh-uh, honey, you better fucking not. You better be going right there alongside of me. And yes, oh, good oh, news. Oh. So keep but, doing it. Go ahead, yes. big dog. Big oh. dog boy. Oh. Mm. oh. Was you dating your husband before you went to law school or after you went to law school? I met my husband when I was 18 years old. I was a freshman in college. I'd been there for four weeks. And I said, what? no boys, honey. And guess what? He just was respectful and nice. And I was like, you know what? Actually, I think the universe is gifting me with a one of a kind, baby. And he was the one. Like, that was oh. it. And it was a blessing. It was a blessing. But I understand that not everybody has that. So let me can I so why did it take y'all so long to get married if that was your blessing? We got married um on our five-year anniversary. So we finished I was 18 years old. I finished undergrad. I didn't want to be an 18-year-old wife. God no, we were boyfriend and girlfriend. We needed that time to date and be young and get to but know you, each other. You said that was your blessing. Of course. And but how many people gonna pass up on their blessing? In them five years y'all dated, he could have went somewhere else. Would you have been feeling some type of way if you would have went somewhere else? I feel well, like yeah. you know you know that now I that is your that. blessing, but back back then you didn't know that, right? Oh, I knew back then. Oh, I knew. Are you then? Oh, you'll know a hundred percent. Oh, know. if you knew back then, eighteen, 100%. that was your blessing. Why you why you wait till you were twenty seven to get married? We didn't, honey. You're not listening. I got married on my five year anniversary. I was twenty three years old. You got married. But she also 20? needed to do the work, right? And then we kept growing together. So we took our time to grow the fuck up because we don't need to be 18 year old husband and wife. Put it at work. We need to be 18 year old kids who are dating and in love. But y'all was in love at 18, right? Absolutely. Well, and what? You what? 10 years to get married? No, no, no. no. It was five years. Yeah, five years. Five, five years, years to get married. Yeah. So basically, what, what, oh, what this, okay. this, this is, is just trying to say is, 
it's most effective in a relationship if you do the work necessary to make sure it ensure the most positive outcome in a relationship. Don't do go things willy nilly. Don't go things. Don't just be led by emotion or sentiment or lust or like or infatuation. Do the things. Be strategic and be thought out in the actions that you do when you're dating, when you're married or what have you, in order to ensure the likelihood of the longevity of the relationship. Oh. That's what we said. But, a lot of people aren't doing that. That's that's Will's whole point. A lot of people aren't doing that. A lot of people are just jumping into shit. They're, I hate this phrase, and I told Will this is I hate the phrase uh building the plane as you fly it. I hate that plane because it that 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 uh phrase it means no forethought, no pre pre planning, no action. I'm like, you have to make sure that this is a fuel fuel fully functioning, safe plane before you start flying that motherfucker. Don't just willy nilly it. Do the work. I definitely That's agree with you. Uh, yeah. People are so into instant gratification, and that's why there's so much casual and just jumping into things. People are afraid of being alone. They don't know how to be alone and just be comfortable with themselves. So yeah. I definitely agree with you on that. And that's, I think that's definitely yeah. affecting dating now. And yeah. you know. I knew I liked you, and not just because your <laughs> wife, your, your, your name is Amber, just like my wife. Well, the, the, only reason, <laughs> the, only, the only reason I asked that question was because when me and my wife got together, it took us a year to get married. So that's yeah. why I asked it. It, it, we didn't, it didn't take us five years to realize we wanted to be with each other. We just got married in a year. That's why I asked that question. Well, I think she said they had a plan of action that they, it was, a, it was they don't understand they took them five years. I think she said they, they had a plan that they wanted to get through before they got married. Not, they, they, they didn't want to be 18 anyway. year old husband and wife. Yeah, that's that's what she's saying. They didn't yeah. want to be married. It's freshman in college. Let me uh, let me uh, read some super chats real quick. Um, Pencil Jack uh, dropped the super chat. Thank you so much. What's uh, up, man? Uh, damn, Amber, I did not see you down there. How you doing? Gorgeous as fuck. I mean, your mind is beautiful, and your words are something. Uh, love emoji. Okay, I uh, appreciate that, Pencil uh, Jack. Pencil, uh, get all the women. All right, thank you so much. Uh, he dropped another super chat. Uh, she's talking nonsense. All right, you can't just decide you're ready. There are millions of 30 year old women complaining that Mr. Wright hasn't fallen out the sky by now. How about the 30 year olds who still move like teens? All right, facts. Yeah. All right, that's a fair assessment. Yeah. And then, Marcus, uh, shout out to you. Uh, red flag if she snaps her fingers, men take notes. All right, thank you so much, uh, Marcus Castillo. I appreciate you guys on the super chat. Thank you so much for showing love. Like I said, if you want to share your opinion, uh, and voice, uh, drop a super chat. I'll be able to read it and respond uh, to you guys. All right. I do want to shift the the conversation again because um, uh, we're talking about harsh truths of their dating struggles, right? Um, something that you guys, the ladies on this panel mentioned, um, you guys mentioned this in your opening statements that uh, I know what I, I know what I bring to the table. I know what I bring to the table uh, to attract uh, the man that I want. Um, I'm just going to give you guys my, just my point of view or my harsh truth. A lot of times when I hear women say, I, I know my worth, I know what I bring to the table. And then you listen to them or what they bring to the table. It's exactly the things that men are not looking for in a committed relationship. And I think one of the harsh truths that we often don't speak about is I think there's this ideology that I've, I've heard this online for a lot of women. I deserve a good man just because I'm a woman. I deserve a good man, a good relationship. In my mentality, I don't believe in the word deserve. I don't think you deserve anything in life. I think you only deserve the things that you're willing to work for and earn. And it brings, brings up the conversation we were having. You can't get the outcome that you want, uh, like Damien said and Katie and Madison. You can't get the outcome that you want without the work, without investing the work to make sure that you get the results that you want for your life. So, um, and something I've always heard from a lot of women is, you know, women have needs of what they want from a uh, from a man long term, uh, which I hear a lot online. But I don't really hear a lot of uh, women talking about what, what they bring to the table. You don't really hear about the things that men are looking for in a relationship because you can be the most attractive woman. But whatever you bring to the table and whatever that is, if it doesn't align for the things that generally what most men are looking for, then that's probably one of the harsh truths a lot of women are uh, having a hard time to accept of why they struggle uh, in relationships because a lot of the things that's normalized today, that's uh, like we have casual sex, 
we have OnlyFans. We have all these things that's normalized today that women do, you know, women posting their body online. These are all normalized things. These are normal in, in society. And the thing is, if that's what you're bringing to the table as a woman, that's not necessarily the things that men, especially the good men, the good masculine men, the men that want to seek a wife, that's not the things that, uh, that they're looking for long term. So a lot of the things that we see online today that's normalized from a lot of women, a lot of times it's not the very things that men are not looking for. So oftentimes I do hear the conversation. I know, I know what I bring to the table, especially right. the things that's normalized today. It's oftentimes not the things that most men are looking for. So I want to bring that conversation up front. I know a lot of the ladies yeah, are saying, I, I, know what, I, know, I know what I bring to the table. So I want to pass it back, back to the ladies of the panel. Uh, a lot of you guys want a good man, good, strong man, relationship, husband. You want a man that's uh, committed to you, loyal to you, and you guys are going to raise a good, healthy, happy relationship. So uh, if, that's, if, that man, if, that's, if there's a, that man is listening to you right now, uh, I want to ask you, ladies, what do you bring to the table to that, to that man, to that relationship that you're looking for in the future? Um, let me start with you, Niha. What do you bring to the table for that man? Sorry, um, I'm just gonna say there's nothing wrong with OnlyFans. I had a, I had a friend who paid her way through medical school, had zero dollars of debt because of OnlyFans. So, oh, we're about to, we're, we're about to have a conversation. Well, you know, my clients are OnlyFans girls, y'all. That's who I carved out my specialty niche for in my law firm is to represent OnlyFans girls. They are killing it. You'd be. Oh yeah, quick, uh, quick question before you proceed, Nia. Uh, is your friend with OnlyFans? Is she married? Uh, I have friends that are married. No. Are married. And how old is she? She is twenty-five. Okay. All right. Twenty-five. OnlyFans. Money. But no, okay. All right. Uh, go ahead, Nia. But uh, but, but she's not married by choice. Okay. Yeah. Right. I believe that. Yeah. She's not yeah. Married yeah. by choice, and she's also bisexual, so she's not wanting a traditional relationship. hold on wait a minute hold on okay all right you, you just gonna take this relate this this conversation a whole different way yeah I don't wait a minute <laughs> she 25 only don't thing act like you're not and excited. Excited. don't act like you're not excited about it <laughs> exactly okay bisexual in the only face we'll come we'll come, back. We'll, come back to we'll come back to the only fans topic but uh, uh the thing is, but so uh, what about what Back about the topic. girls that don't have OnlyFans who aren't? I don't, I, I don't wanna I don't wanna go to the OnlyFans topic. <laughs> 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 Let's just, uh, I'm gonna go back to Niha. Niha, the, the main topic we're discussing. What do you bring to the table, especially for the man that you want? Like what do you bring to that man? So I think what women in general bring is No, no, I'm not talking about women in general, I'm talking about you. I'm talking about you. What do you bring to that man? Yeah, yeah. I wanna hear too, Neha. You're a badass. Tell me. <laughs> so I went to medical school. I have multiple degrees. I have gone through life with experiencing hardships. So I bring a psychological assessment of my different experiences and I have the ability to assess your experiences and see if they are compatible to mine and tell you like, this is gonna work or this is not gonna work. I have the ability to be direct. I have the ability to have compassion when I'm being direct. And other than, you know, the other things that I can bring equivalently in terms of finances, I also have the additional, um, maybe you can say it's a leg up of being a woman where we can bring a different version of compassion to the relationship. All right, thank you. So, all right, thank you so much, uh, Nihia, um, uh, uh, for answering that question. Uh, let me just drop the super chat real quick. Marcus Antonio Castillo, two dollars super chat. So Nihia's friend sold her soul for money. Only fan stamp. All right, thank you so much. I uh, appreciate that, uh, Marcus. I'll, I'll pass it to you. Uh, and also, I'm sorry, uh, Jack also dropped the super chat. Uh, last one. A harsh truth that women refuse to accept is that to the men that they would marry, body count matters. You needing to lie about bodies matters. The sexual experiences you attain don't matter. Okay. All right, no worries. Thank you so much, uh, Fenzo Jack, for the super chat. I appreciate you. Uh, I pass it to you, Anna. Anna, the, uh, you know, the man that you're going to marry in the future, the good man, the good masculine man that's going to love you, commit to you. You guys are going to build a strong, healthy family. What do you bring to the table uh, to yes. him? 
So like we said, we, we all want a masculine leader men, right? So a good leader needs a good support system. And I feel like I, that's something that me as a woman bring to the table, compassion, understanding, what, what, what are you burned out at the end of the day? Talk to me, I communicate. I need to understand where you're coming from. Um, you know, I'm also smart. Are you struggling with something? Do you need a, a different perspective? Do you need a different opinion? We can have that conversation. Um, are you struggling internally? Are you insecure about something? How can I reassure you as a man, as your women? Um, what else? Are you having doubts? I can, I can, I, be, I will be honest and I will tell you this is what I feel like you might be doing wrong. I'm not gonna, um, I'm sorry, my English is my second language, so there's things that I only know in Spanish. So, like, I will not, um, be like, oh, yeah, yeah, you're doing everything fine, just keep going when I know that in the path that you might be leading, it's not going towards success. So, I will tell you about yourself in a respectful way, in a way that will help you build you as a leader. That's what partnership is all about. Okay. You both do that for each other. You really exactly. do. Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Anna. And uh, D Lovely, uh, I don't know if you're watching this. I see you in the background. Uh, I'm going to bring you I'm gonna bring you in uh, after everybody has gone, but I do see you. So thank you for jumping on as a guest. Uh, there's a process for new people I have to put you through. Uh, okay. So, yeah, I, so I'll, we'll, we'll, I'll come to you, D Love. Just be patient. All right. Um, I'll pass it to you. Well, Madison, you're married. But uh, you already found your ideal partner. I'll pass it to you, uh, Miss True. Uh, Miss True, for the man, your future man, good man. I love you, commit to you, uh, the masculine man. Um, what do you bring to the table to that man? Uh, I know the value of hard work. I've been through the trenches. I am a mother, so I do know how to put people, uh, people other people's needs above mine. I'm constantly putting other people's needs above mine. And sometimes when you are in a relationship, you got to think about that other person too. Um, so I bring knowledge. I bring love. I bring wisdom. I'm not a girl who's out. And have I been? Sure thing. Am I now? I'm not. What I'm looking for is somebody who can be my partner though, too. Not only are you going to be masculine, you're going to be my best friend. You're going to do, and I think I saw somebody here that said something about it's not the 1940s anymore. You want equality in the workplace? Well, shit, I wish I didn't have to go to work 10 hours a day. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and the cooking and the cleaning and all that, sure, it comes with it. And if I was a woman who was staying at home and I wasn't working, best believe I would be bringing that to the table. But what I bring to the table is hard work. I always finish what I start. Honesty, consistency. I mean, what, what are men actually looking for though? You guys talked a lot about what they're not looking for. What are they looking for? I could, I could, yeah, we're gonna respond. Like answer. Answer. Like yeah, we're gonna respond. Yeah, we're gonna respond. Stand their ground. Yeah. Because I don't have an OnlyFans. I own a home. I work. I take care of me, myself, and a whole bunch of other things. So what is it that they are looking for? Okay. Because we know right. what they're not looking for. Okay. All right. So thank you so much, uh, Ms. True. Uh, I'll keep it moving. I'll pass it to you, Amber. Amber, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's you, the future man that you're going to meet. He's going to love you, commit to you. What do you bring to the table to him? Um, what I bring to the table is peace, support, and stability. Um, you know, I can be someone's peace of mind. Um, like we said, you're supposed to match energy. You give a, every person gives full 100. If you're having a bad day, I can support myself and you, you know, and you're, you're supposed to be equal in that sense. Um, supportive, you know, I'm very supportive and I'm very ambitious. So, um, you know, I have a very strong work ethic. I know a lot of men say, well, we don't care if a woman has a degree, but uh, you know, I, I have a degree and I'm getting a degree so I can be comfortable and bring stability. So if a man decides that there's something he wants to accomplish, I can help support him in that way. Um, you know, and I also bring stability mentally and emotionally as well. Um, I'm 
very mentally stable and I'm not putting anyone with mental illness down. I'm saying we all deal with, you know, things mentally. I'm saying in the sense where I'm very open-minded that, you know, if there's something I don't know, I'm not stuck in my old ways. I know what works for me and what doesn't. And I'm willing to grow and build with that person. So I keep an open mind in that sense. And I'm just looking to, to build a family and I'm very family oriented. So I feel like with the right person, I can offer that, uh, that whole family marriage lifestyle that I'm looking for and a potential partner would be looking for. All right. So thank you so much, Amber. Appreciate that. All right, thank you, ladies. I want to pass it to the fellas and then uh, fellas, I want your uh, honest uh, response to everything they said. And we're talking about harsh truths now. So let's let's give them the harsh truths. Uh, <laughs> the thing, the, out of all the things that they said, what do you agree on? That these are the things that good, strong, masculine men, men who want to lead, take care of the woman, they're committed to their woman. These are the things they're looking for. And also, what is what are the things that you heard from from the ladies that these not women men are not considering considering that as, when they're looking for their ideal wife and they're looking for their partner? I start with you, big dog. Oh, okay. Uh. Out the out the four women that said anything, what men will find most attractive is Amber first by her answers, by being support and stability and um I can't remember what else she said, but I know the support system and the stability. Peace. That is what what else? Peace. Peace. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, them three answers right there is what be on most single men's top ten list or top five list of what they're looking for in a potential wife. So Amber will be the first one off the board. Then Anna will be the second woman off the board. Mm. By her answers. Now, Neha, is that saying your name right? Neha? It's Neha, but that's okay. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to say it right. I'm sorry. And uh, Ms. True, yeah, I will be the last two picked. <laughs> Just I'm just not. I mean, me personally, me personally, I, I'm a, I'm a rocker who I who I vibe with. It don't make a difference with me. But just going by what men saying in 2024, Amber will be the prize, and Miss True will be the one left holding the bag. That's just going out what men say today. And uh, big dog barking. What was the specific thing that uh, Niha or Ida said? That was the things that made Anna, most men are not Anna, Anna, Anna was when she said so. Like, like I said, when when Amber said peace, support, and stability, that's what a lot of single men be looking for. They don't care about your job. They don't care about your money. They don't care about your education. I'm just going off the talking points. Yeah. So off the talking points, Amber has has said things that many men will find attractive mm -hmm. in a potential wife. Anna said some of the same things too. And on top of that, according to talking points, because she's Hispanic, they feel like foreign women are better than Western women just because of her culture, just because of her ethnic background. Miss True, she could be a good woman, but because she has a baby and she's a single mother, according to the talking points, he's a red flag. And uh, Niha, she was all over the place. She's a red flag because she couldn't give you one one thing that just stuck out. She gave you a million things that a lot of men were like, eh, you just scatterbrain. We don't know what you, what you really got to bring to the table. So you really, but because she don't have a, because she's not a single mother, he'll go before Miss True. That just caused the talking points. All right. Uh, all right. Appreciate that feedback, big dog. Uh, let me just read the super chat real quick before I pass it to Damien. Uh, shout out to you, Fenzo Jack, five dollars super chat. Uh, I want to spit my shot at Amber. My shoot God, shoot shot, my brother. Uh, uh, shoot my shot at Amber. My no, God. no, no, no. He said spit, but I'm just saying he needs oh, to go oh. and shoot a shot. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, my God, this woman is turning stars into romance with how she tempts my savage to commit. LOL, <laughs> JK. I don't cam up ever. Okay. <laughs> All right, uh, no worries. Uh, shout out to you, Fenzo Jack. Thank you so much uh, for the super chat. All right, so uh, I'll pass it to you, Damien. Damien, we're talking about harsh truths now. So no, no, you, heard, no, you know, I'm gonna keep it one hundred. Yeah, I'll you say. heard they heard right. the response of the, the women. So what's your what's your feedback? Where's your wife, bro? Where's she at tonight? 
She's sleeping. Where are you? I'm in my office. But like, where? Like, what state? San Antonio, Texas. Oh, I'm from Texas. Woo! Go Texas. All right. Well, I'm a Californian. I'm, I'm a I'm a Californian living in Texas. <laughs> I just need to. Know. I love Texas. Love yeah. it. Okay, I just need to know. Go. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. She, she, which guy? She's Um Okay. Everything you guys said, like. For the most part was valid all i'm saying is just the, the difficult part of men try to try to that's okay what is something you're going to do that you not just wouldn't do for your closest best friend a lot of things you say i'm going to be considered i'm going to be attentive i'm going to be supportive like you would do that for your worst girlfriend if she was going to something i was like something outside of sex that you're going to do an exclusively for exclusively for your man you know that's the thing i think a lot of women have a, a lot of times trying to figure out well, what is the thing that separates my man from my best friend outside of sex you know and the easiest thing, the easiest, I'm gonna give like the, the answers to the test is, you know, women who, 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 my wife didn't say it exactly like this, but she said a variation of this. That's how I knew she was going to be my wife was, you know, cause I would never ask her what she brings to the table. She was just like, I promise to uh, uh, relentlessly learn what it is that you need to feel masculine uh supported uh peaceful and appreciated and to do those things consistently uh for the rest of our lives those i'm gonna because you can name a bunch of stuff but you need to say i'm going to do what you need because what i need and what the dude before me or the dude around me and what's called may need something totally different so i'm thinking you need to figure out what exclusively that makes me feel and that's what i would say I bring whatever that man needs to feel these things that makes him feel validated uh, in what he's doing uh, uh, as as my man. I think that's important. I'm thinking all those things are like, listen, all these things, those all those traits were were great. It, it, you know, those are all great, and, and they're going to get you long places and stuff like that. But it, it, it's it's I, I think if you focus too much on all the accomplishments you've done, it doesn't really highlight the things you're going to do for that person. You know, and and like for said, and 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 Nehas asked in the chat, what do you guys bring to the table? What this it's access stuff like that. So, and I'm just gonna answer that question is is I'm willing to I can differentiate the things I'm willing to do for a best friend and what I'm putting for wife. I'm not buying my wife no no best friend a house, I'm not buying my wife a car. I may not always just off rip put my life in in danger for my best friend you know i may not i may not without question like i may sacrifice for my best friend but i'm gonna have some wait what did you do <laughs> yeah. why why, what, why is this dude trying to shoot you why is this you know what is this i'm like well for my wife no question somebody say something to her it's on and popping somebody right. does something to her it's on and popping i can't say that for my best friend yeah. That's what I'm saying. Those are the things I'm willing to do over and above. And I'm willing to in, do the things to ensure that my wife's life is the easiest possible life. And I'm going to do it. And I'm going to get, uh, 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 I'm going to feel good doing it. Making sure that her life is fucking easy as hell. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's gonna, it's, I'm going to get something out of it. That's what I bring to the table. I give an enthusiasm to make sure that your life is easy. You feel heard. You feel seen. I'm going to lay down my life for you. I'm going to invest all my resources and I'm going to trust you with my legacy and, 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 and trust you to raise our children, to be the nurturing, the point of uh, 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 nurturing for our children. That's what I'm going to do. So how long did it take you to get to that point where you could consciously say, I will provide you with being heard and seen because a lot of men, when they start dating women, it's either they come in hot and then it fizzles and yep, then yep. they they go through like this phase where the woman decides okay you know what i've had enough and they decide i'm gonna leave you and then they say oh give me another chance and then that whole cycle comes back that happens a lot that's that's and you, you that's that's generally the way it happens and and I'm, i'll be 100 percent transparent to a degree that's the way it happened for us because we it was you know, we were still trying to figure it out the first three years of our relationship because it was all like, you know, hot and you know, honeymoon phase. And oh, my God, I got a wife. Oh, my God, I got a husband. Everything is, you know, that kind of bullshit, you know. But what happened was we started arguing. We started realizing 
that we want the same thing, but the idea of how to get there, you know, or, you know, I started being over demanded. I had the, I make all the money. So you're going to listen to what I say mentality. Okay. But then um, I had to, I had to like take a step and like get, do the work and get like, learn how to, to communicate and make sure that she feels heard and seen and she's valued in the relationship. And that took talking to other people who had good relationship and going up to, and going to therapy. Good job, Dina. Right. Good job. All right. Uh, let me just uh, read one more super chat and I'll pass it to you, Prime, because I know you uh, haven't got a chance to uh, to speak. So thank you for jumping on as a guest, uh, Prime. And Bob Fessler, good to see you as a guest. Hi, Hi, all right. How so, are we doing? All right. So, Fenso Jack, shout out to you with a super chat, $10 super chat. Uh, single moms are a huge red flag. You would cut off and alienate the man you buried a child for. A child is a huge commitment, loyalty, and good vetting is a green flag i'm just disposable guy uh to you all right uh thank you for the super chat uh fenzel jack uh but i'll pass it to you prime uh you heard the responses from the ladies um if we go uh, talk about harsh truths um what's your response to that and i'll pass it to you bottle and i'll come back to the ladies so you guys can respond as well go ahead prime. Can, can you rephrase the question one more time sorry the, oh, so the, ladies, were, so the ladies were talking about what they brought to the table. So we're just, what's as a man, you understand how men think and what they look for. So what was your, um, res what's your response to the things they said? Is, is that the things that generally men don't look for, or those are the things that generally, generally men don't look for? Um, I want to say that, I mean, as far as what everybody said, once Amber said peace of mind, and it, it's different between saying peace and peace of mind. Um, for those that don't know, like I recently went through a divorce and the reasoning for my leaving was peace of mind. And that is something that um, I feel like people don't actually understand. Um, Cause then peace of mind extends to what I always say whenever people ask me what I look for in a woman is reverence is not knowing it's the difference between it's the difference between keeping your mouth shut and knowing when to keep your mouth shut it's not a matter of i need you to shut your mouth it's a matter of you need to understand when you're spoken to when to reflect back with me and work with me on certain things and so as far as cold hard truth goes um I, I think that in today's day and age, one, it's hard with women that have children. For me personally, I personally don't care. I, I know that I'm in a bucket of people that it doesn't matter for somebody like me. Um, the problem that you have is there's less women like Miss True where she's actually doing something about it versus the women that are out there with children that just made a whole bunch of bad decisions. Um, one of the things in the, in, in a lot of behavioral analysis tutoring that I do, um, yeah, the, here's the issue with your answer is you answered it the way that a man would answer it. That's the only issue. I got what you were saying, but you answered it the way that a man answers it. When women answer something, the way that a man would answer it, he's just going to be shut down totally. Uh, I'm, I'm good. You know what? I 100% agree Because at that point, oh, yeah, good. Um, at that point, because uh, in the problem with most men today, I'm not saying, uh, like, I'm not particularly <laughs> one of these men, but most men today have the sense of competing with a lot of women. I mean, Madison's a really good example of this. A lot of men are competing with women that are high, uh, you know, high articulate, high malicious, very vicious, very intentful. There, there's a lot of men that are competing with women. And so when you answer the question like a man, a lot of men just automatically will shut down. What is As like for a Anna's man? case. Tell me what like a man means. What is so that? I've actually had men tell me you're an intimidating woman for me to date. Therefore, I don't want to date you. I've had somebody say that to my face. And I so, felt so weird about it. Bro. But but here here's the thing. So like a man, when I say like a man is whenever a man answers a question, typically it's based off of the preface of what he can provide. Okay. When women are in their natural feminine, it's typically based off of the preface of the preface of how nurturing they can be. That's the reason why Amber Amber off the rip 
it was really easy for her to say what she had to say because off the rip, it was how nurturing she could be. And so in most cases for men, if they're not going to get a nurturing answer, they're going to look at it as a competitive answer. And most men are competitive. And so naturally speaking, a man will look at it from a competitive standpoint. Oh, fuck. Well, she's got a degree. She's got this. She's got her life together. She has also got X, Y, Z. Fuck. Now I'm competing with her, not just other men. And so th that's that's just the cold hard truth that I wanted to like spill okay. out there. But All other right. than that, I have a question about that though. So yeah, somebody said ahead. having a house uh, and having yeah, a job yeah, and yeah. doing all that was a turn off. Mr. 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 Uh, let me just go to Balafesa real quick, and then once Balafesa is done, then I'll come back to you, ladies, yeah, and, you guys, after and you guys can respond and ask your questions. All right, so uh, Balafesa, go ahead real quick. I know. Thank you for jumping on as a guest. Uh, what do you want to add on, or? Yeah, look, line, line the uh, line the question up for me. Well, uh, uh, well, been, been a lot that's been said. Mike is messing up. It brings, you your mic just messed up. Oh, you hear me now? Yeah. No, the last fifteen minutes, the ladies were talking about what they brought to the table. So the the fellows were assessing what they brought to the table were generally the things that men were looking for. So I don't know if you were here the last 15 minutes to listen to that. So uh, if not, then you can just add on to whatever you heard so far. Uh, I didn't hear fealty. And if, if someone's mentioned it, then uh, my apologies. Uh, fealty. So look, we can, to all the ladies, disqualify whoever it is that you do not like. I've heard description of leadership and masculinity. This is where I've got to push back on Joe. We don't give a shit what package you come in. We just mitigate for risk. Often time when you hear talking point about having children, that's one way of us mitigating risk. We look at, we look at children in the sense of, is it a son? Is it a girl? Is it over a certain age? If we get in, involved in the relationship, is there going to be a risk of being put in a predicament where I can't back out of it? Okay, so it's all about mis, uh, risk mitigation. So, again, this whole idea of um, competing with women, let me just say, from a particular subset of men, we don't give a shit. We don't want to compete with you. If we like you, if we think you're attractive, that's all it is. And then our engagement from then on, the way that you are around us is where we make that decision. Whatever package you're wrapped in, if, if we find you attractive enough to engage with you, that's all it is. And then we mitigate risk based on a couple of factors. People were speaking about body count. That's, that horse has been beaten up in this space so far more than, than we could ever um, touch on. But it's all about behavior. Women yeah. who have a promiscuous lifestyle tend to behave in a very certain manner compared to someone who's quite reserved and who's reserved their sexuality for a particular type of people. That's all it is. Um, so fealty is a big one. Um, if you can't provide that, then it's going to be extremely difficult. Fealty? Fealty. Fealty. Loyalty. Like dedication to duty. Loyalty. Fealty encompasses loyalty, but it's understanding duty and responsibility. Where is that? What is that word? Is that English? Yeah, it is. <laughs> it isn't. No, no. It, it's English. Um, it's F I E L T Y. Uh, if you want to look it up, you can look it up. I'm going to read the definition right now. It's uh, the state of owing one service, particularly of a soldier, warrior, knight rider, to a king, queen, or other ruler. Uh, that, was, that was on Google. All right. So uh, thank you so much, Paulo Um I know Miss True, you had a, you had a question. I know Neil had a question, and then Madison I think, wanted, to, wanted to respond. But Miss True, go ahead. Uh, I know you had a question. Yeah, what was my question? Um, Oh my gosh. Okay. So no, I was saying, I remember I, your I, question. I'm reading the chats here and it's, I remember your and, question. You said somebody said about having a house and stuff like that is unattractive. You were saying something of that bag. So would it be You're more attractive red flag. that I didn't have a job and I was on assistance? Is that more attractive? Do you need to feel like you need to completely save me? According to the talking points, either way you go, you fucked. No, that just, that, stop it. 
Stop it, dog. She's not like. I'm gonna tell you why. I'm gonna tell you, now, now, tell you saying, why. Now, me personally, let me dog go. Let me dog go. Now, now, me personally, I will give her a pat. I'm, I give her a pat on the back. Oh, for I'm being not gonna a... stay out of the chat, though. Oh, I'm about to say because me personally, Miss True, she got her own thing going on, and, and a single mother take care of her business, and she get a round of applause from me. But I'm going out with. Thank you. But yeah, what I'm going off with the talking points is that. According to some men, because she's doing this, that, and the third, and a single mother, mm -hmm. there, there's nothing for me to do for her. Now, if she's on the other end of the spectrum where she's on federal on government assistance and she got a hand, I guess what? She's also fucked on that end, too, because don't nobody want that either. Like I said, that's See, the talking When points. we first started, I said, I have been stuck in my masculine energy for so long. I would welcome the opportunity to not have to make a decision, to not always be the breadwinner. I believe, not I believe that. that. I, I, I believe when you first said that, I said, all you needed was a, a man that's going to be a man around you, so you won't have to be so masked. That's what I really believe. But according to talking points, the men don't want to deal with you. No, but so when you're a high-performing woman, every man seems like they're not a man enough. Like in terms of this truth, she can hold her financial, she can take care of her kid. You can take care of her business, yeah. Yeah. So you like how much more how many more steps above do you need to be from if I was truth? if I was a single if I was a single man, I would I would talk to Miss True with no problem. It wouldn't even bother me what she got going on, because I'm still gonna do what I gotta do as a man regardless of what she got going on. If I find her attractive and we can and we're compatible me and miss true would be cool i wouldn't give a fuck about none of the shit she got going on we compatible. You're saying, we straight. so but you're saying you need to earn significantly more than her in order to feel okay about yourself so that you no, I, I think it goes back to the preface uh, of what i stated you know it, it comes down to if a man feels like he's competing with you and i think that this is truly where it separates the difference between the boys and the men right, right. is that you, you'd like in, in a lot of cases, like I can only speak from my own experience, right? So as an example, in my situation, there's a lot of situations that a lot of the guys wouldn't settle for that I genuinely just don't care for. But on the opposite spectrum, most men today, especially most men my age, they're not doing all of the things that I do. They're not doing all of the things that you do. And so it's like at that point, they're feeling like they have to overcompensate just to meet you at the bar, regardless of what's on the table. So Miss True needs to go for a baller, essentially, is what you're saying. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no I, I think it, it comes back down to what, what, um, what I was stating about Amber. It, it's like, it's like it, if you're going to be searching for a man, search for a man, definitely. I mean, if he's a baller, that's a plus. But also be nurturing to a man. Like, as much as you are masculine and getting your shit done, as much as you're checking all your lists and doing all your deeds that you need to for your son, I mean, uh, I can, I, can I jump in? Somebody this? asked, yeah. what am Go I ahead. doing? I'm not doing anything. I never leave this house. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, let me just read yeah, this yeah, yeah, yeah. chat real quick and I'll pass it to you, Balo. I know you want to say something uh, profound. <laughs> All right. Um, Marcus, uh, the guy will say intimidate, meaning you're too much. Shout out to you. Thank you so much, Marcus, uh, with the super chat. Uh, and then Phil Cell Jack with the super chat said, uh, when a man uses terms like intimidating, masculine, or combative to describe a woman's disposition, he checks out. It's a losing battle before it begins. He can't respond because you're a woman. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Fenzo Jack. Uh, Paulo Fesso, I know you wanted to say something. Go ahead. Shout out to Harambe. That's him. Look, um, I have an issue when we describe women as masculine. There's no such thing. And I have a big issue with that. The big issue with that is because we... How have we defined masculinity as men? It has to be associated to a man. He's got to have balls and nuts. But also at the same time, his ability to control his nature and manifest it when he sees fit. So, the correction is, women can be domineering and they compete with men. And that's fine. That's how the world is. It is what it is. But you're not masculine. Neither can men be feminine. This is, what, this is why we have big issues now that it's overcomplicated to the extremes where men want to be, want to be women and want to be revered as women. 
and vice versa. So, Joe, I, I know I'm coming for you on this one, but domineering is a better word for me, and I've got to address it because one of the no, things right. that I you're appreciate right. Will for is the uh, conversation that we have on the masculine mind. Let's define words, and let's define it so we both understand where we're coming from. Yeah. I want women to be women. You're beautiful the way you are, whatever your temperament is. But mas masculinity and masculine shouldn't be associated to a woman because it's the same as femininity. We can never be women and women can never be men. And it's beautiful that way. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Bob Fessa. Uh, I just want to pass it to Anna. I know, Anna, you've been quiet a little bit, so I just want to get your feedback. Anything you want to add on? What, Anna? Um, I was. I just wanted to say that um, somebody said that um, Miss True... Um, that she that she answered like a man, but she didn't. She answered in a very nurturing way. She said, "I will put my knees above, no, your knees above my own." So uh, how is that masculine? She's literally okay. saying, "I am a mother. I know how to put my needs, put somebody else's needs before mine, so I could do the same for my man or for for my future husband." How is that masculine? I think she was talking about they were talking about Neha. <laughs> she has like a very. It was um, a very. Mr. Yeah, I think that was me. No, but what what I said about Miss True is that she she was on the spectrum of actually doing something about it. It's the moment that she was if she wasn't doing something about it, then then it's in a totally different ballgame. And I was just want to say, like like with, with Miss True, I know, you know, I got a, I got love and My mom met a had three kids. She met my stepdad. He was a he was a dope ass dude, and she had a dope ass life. She's still living with him. He ain't dead or like that, but they've been married for forty years or what have you, like that. My first wife had a kid or what have you, even though it didn't work out. Uh, all I'm saying is like, and you actually look like exactly like my first wife. That's why it's kind of blowing my mind. You kind of guys could be twins. <laughs> so it, it's just it, the thing is this is that you know it's just like you got to just be a lot a little bit more discerning and as there's a lot of dudes like when somebody says oh you need to get a baller you need to get with a dude who sees the value in everything your total package that's the way it is it's like it shouldn't be about you know if he sees the value in you but don't see the value of you know the children that comes along with you then you know what he after you know that's gonna be like the road i think you know this stuff i'm not telling you something mm -hmm. you don't know what have you i think you know you just gonna have to be a little more discerning because you with the fact that you 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 have children there's you, you've eliminated some people will eliminate you off the bat but that's good because there aren't the dudes that you want in the first place. Exactly. Yep. So, you know, those are the people that, you know, so you need to just be like, but like you were talking like earlier about, oh, there's 40 year olds talking about they want kids now. Don't ever date those guys because they just want to smash you because they, yeah. and then they're going to get have kids with the 30 year old or what have you. It's that's the dudes the who ever, flag, though, right? Oh, but if he's 40, 40 years old, saying he wants kids, never been married, never had kids and you think you want some now. I don't know. He could have been on his purpose or whatever like that. But yeah, if he's he going to a, yeah, he, he, but he look at the body of work. Uh, yeah, yeah. If he if he's got a, if he's he established himself or whatever like that, then you know where, what he's been doing for his life. But I'm saying, but if if they're coming at you and they're just like you know, uh, uh, I want to date you and I'm 40 years old and I want kids, they don't want it from you. They just say this is an attractive woman. I want to have sex with her and and mm -hmm. fill her a bunch of bullshit, you know, I, and. And just to kind of piggyback, and just now to get off that, just piggyback off of what uh, 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 what what I've been saying earlier was just like, you know, you'll find women just need to find people who they need to set what their value proposition is, what their value set is, and just set that, and then not move off that, not try to make people fit into it or whatever, or change stuff or whatever. Men and women need to set their values and only date according to those values, as opposed to, uh, oh, I oh I can change this, or I can change, you know, I can do this, or I can change this person to kind of fit in my idea of what my partner should look like or what have you only rock with people that have the same values with you don't sit there and and, and delude yourself uh in relationships and you'll be fine or whatever so can i say something to that point yes that's a problem that we have often when meeting somebody new that they they put a mask and they tell you that whatever they want to align themselves to you and then once they feel like they have you, I feel like somebody else, I think Miss True was saying that she struggles with people that they, that she doesn't believe in their true intentions because people do fake who they are. And, and then at the end of the day, they will, you cannot fake, you cannot fake it for so long. You can only fake it for so long. And that's where yeah, the relationship starts to, to fail. And in my case, 
I just tell people, like, listen, this is who I'm going to show you who I am. I will be my the most raw version of myself. I will let I will leave that decision to you if you want to deal with me or not. That that's up to you. I expect the same from you. And if I along the way see that your words are not aligning with your actions, then I'm gonna cut you off right right off the bat because you're just you were trying to be deceitful. And where is that gonna lead in a future relationship? Can I, can I quickly offer you too. some words of endearment here? <laughs> Women Anna. want peace too. Yes. Look. I think we've identified this in multi there's multiple women who say who've said this uh, on numerous occasions. If he is aligning to you, please cut him off straight away. Mm-hmm. Men should move in their purpose and they should speak to you about the direction of their life, how they want you to complement it. Because now you understand that he's not going to try and sweet talk you. He's only going to give you an option whether you align with him or you don't. And that gives you so much time to whether you want to pick to be around him or move on to the next person that you want. If you keep finding men, one of the things that we've got to have conversation around as women start getting into corporate spaces and to the workforce is learn how to take the pants off. Take them off, baby. Let them fucking loose. <laughs> Wear a shirt and, the, and do it from the top. The, and the reason oh, for that, that is... What the hell even kind of comment is that, bro? <laughs> Madison... You'll have your turn. Let me finish my, okay, my point. Bro. The reason for that is bro. the reason for that is women have learned to compete with men, so then you don't look at the complementary aspect of what you look for as a man. Right. If you're domineering in spaces where you are having to compete with other men, unfortunately you adopt certain um, temperaments and certain attitudes that will make you not look for the type of guy that you want to be with. So the pants is what? An analogy to what men do. So Will and I have had conversation around the idea of women have to find things that make you feel feminine. I don't know what that looks like, whether that's gardening, that's painting your, your nails, whatever that is. So learn to take the pants off so that you don't uh, end up in a situation where you're attracting guys who only say what they need to say to get into your pants. And, and, and it Are sounds like that's what's been workforce happening. workforce or in dating? Because I feel like you're in mixing. Dating. In, in dating. dating. So, so unfortunately for you ladies, it's difficult to take, take yourselves out of the workforce mode. That's sad if that's true. Yeah. Some of us don't you have tell a me. choice. Let me, uh, let me read you, some of you, you have experience in that. Tell me what it's like for you. Is it easy for you to switch back and forth or is it difficult? And I'm not making any assumptions. Yeah, she's got a fucking rock for two kids. Let her talk. Let her talk. Madison, you interrupted. Yeah. Let's lose a little decorum. Let her talk. But I know, based on like the two hours that we've spent together, that most of you are going to assume that I am a more masculine personality, that I am a feminine personality. Now, if you had met me in person, you would see that I balance my reactions in a very tapered way to which suits the environment and the communication I'm having with the person. So I think mm-hmm. that's a feminine quality. To say what is necessary at the right time in the right place, that's a feminine quality. In, a, in, in essence, if I had that masculine quality, then I would be saying whatever I needed or I wanted to say whatever was rational. So in a workspace, I feel like Sometimes you need to be direct, but sometimes you need to tailor your words. So yes, it is hard to switch from work mode to personality, personal personality mode, but I think it's the same thing with every aspect of it. But I feel like women, we are very yeah. versatile. We, we had to be versatile. We had to put the pants on like... Um, Paolo Faso was saying because that was the only way that we would get a seat at the table but then we were we were able to switch it back to the feminine energy when needed so what, what's wrong with being able to do both nothing wrong with it I, I, I don't agree that I don't agree with the sentiment that you do switch back and forth uh, I think women uh, tend to extremify the ability to be nurturing so they seek out these things that will provide uh, opportunity for themselves and for the people in their care. That's all it is. I don't disagree with the way you act. I'm just making an assessment, and that's, I don't assume, which is why I asked you the question there. 
Uh, but in, an, in an ideal society, we wouldn't have to switch it back and forth, right? But oh, absolutely. that's, not, that's absolutely. not where we live. I really like that yeah. you said that there isn't such a thing as masculine or feminine there, in terms of how somebody acts. It's a woman is acting more direct when she needs to be direct to get something done. But inherently, she has the capable nature of being nurturing, kind, and compassionate. Those things exist in us, but sometimes we need to be the asshole because if we are not the asshole, it doesn't get done. Right. Absolutely. No, and, and that's the let me just reach the landscape. Point, I I'll just finish this. Uh, well, and that's the landscape that we exist now in the West is that both men and women are having to work. And now we're finding it's problematic in many different ways, especially when it comes to children. So my comment earlier is somewhat of an analogy, even though you might disagree, Madison, but find things that bring you back into what it means to you to be a woman. Because those are the things that are going to allow you to filter for the kind of man that you want. And I'm not disagreeing with whatever you've said today. Um, I'm just offering some words of endearment. All right, let me just read some super chats real quick. Uh, Harambe, uh, Fenso Jack, thank you so much. Uh, yes, I am Harambe Jack, but if you know, you know. I've got, I've gone by dozens of monikers at this point. I like to switch it up just because I don't like folks pocket watching my SCs. I'm a brokey. Don't at me. No. All right, thank you so much. Don't ask me for nothing. <laughs> All right, uh, and then Marcus Antonio Castillo uh, said direction test for the lace uh, for the ladies make a sandwich. Okay. <laughs> All right, uh, thank you so much, Marcus. Uh, Fencil Jack just dropped another super chat. Uh, uh, does Maddie need a daddy? She's wild and acting out. Ooh, yeah, child speaking so attention. <laughs> How are men supposed to listen to women like this who say twenty one is too young, but wait until I'm thirty, but still immature? Um, but Madison, I'll let you. Um, I know you have, I, I want to give you some time too, Madison, to respond to a lot of things you, that you heard from the fellas. So uh, go ahead, Madison. Thank you. Well, I appreciate that. First of all, my husband is so fucking hot and he is my daddy. And I cannot wait to make him a daddy. And girls, when you're ready to be a wife, you're going to want that too, if that's what you want. And men, look for a girl who wants to make you a father. That's amazing. She wants to be a mother too. You find that girl, okay? Don't give a shit about all the other ones. Find that one. Everybody, that's the rule. Go find the one that you want. That's all that matters. Don't give a shit what anybody else is doing. But I want to tell Miss True's story because I said earlier that like I have all these like singles. I literally kind of have like a roster of single people, okay? And I like match make them, okay? It's just like something I do like kind of for my friends, I guess. But I have one guy on my list and this guy opened my heart to like a new perspective that I truly just didn't know because it wasn't my own experience. Right. And he literally told me like, he wants to be a stepdad. Like he really wants that. He thinks that like, that is a good fit for him and his personality. And this guy is like 26 and cute and sweet and wise. Like he's wise enough to know himself. So just know that like, there's men out there that have that perspective and like i love that i think it's really really sweet and i hope you find your truest of all true loves and that you live a great life thank you okay <laughs> all right uh thank you so much maddie i uh, appreciate that uh let me pass it to amber i know amber you've been quiet a little bit just want to make sure you get some uh speaking time but uh anything want to add on amber or response to the fellas or what they were what they were saying um i mean at the end of the day I think that obviously men and women are different in our own ways. You know, masculine and feminine is subjective to people, but I feel like the right person will find, you'll give each other that balance. You know, I'll be the right amount of feminine for a man that's looking for that um, nurturing personality, that nurturing type of relationship, you know, and I'll find a man that's the right amount of masculine, you know, lead by example, uh, you know, still be able to allow me to have my own mind and my own thoughts, uh, you know. Um, but I, I just think the relationship dynamic can be kind of subjective. There's so many different factors that can go into that. And I just think ultimately you just have to find the person that's leveled with you on the same level. Uh, if you don't find that person, you don't like them, it's fine. Just move on. There's no need to entertain the wrong person. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Amber. Um, uh, I just want to give you some time. Big Dog, I know you were listening patiently uh, as everybody was going back and forth. Is there anything you want to add on about Big Dog? Oh, no, I was just listening. You know what I'm saying? The, 
What the, the, the it, on the personal level, the women up here, I don't have a problem. They they wonderful women. I'm just you know, just talking about the talking points that I hear every day on these places. It's like just dissecting it from don't that angle. So I have nothing really to add. Okay, all right. Thank you so much, Big Dog. Uh, just as like uh, I know we're gonna close uh, uh, pretty soon. I just want to pass it back to the ladies because we're talking about harsh truths. Are there any things uh, and anything you want to ask the fellas? You just want to know the honest opinion, how men think. If you want to hear the honest truth from, how, uh, from the fellas, uh, that you just want to ask. Let's, let's throw that question out, out there. You know, because like, like uh, Damon said, for a lot of guys, uh, if you find a guy that's agreeing with you all the time, a lot of guys always agree. They use that, they use that as a strategy to get, you know, get in your pants. You know, so most guys won't won't be able to give you guys the absolute truth. So um, we talk about harsh truths, ladies. Is there any question you want to throw out to the fellas? You just want to get the honest answer: Why men do this, or why men behave like this, or why men do this in dating? You know, why do they do certain things? You just want to know. No? Um, so. My ex-husband was very okay with me providing financially for us. Like I paid for the rent, I paid for the groceries, I paid for our lifestyle. And because I did that, he developed a gambling habit with his own money. So, uh, so um, trust me when I say I'm very happy to be out of that marriage. So what makes you guys want to not be loyal to the type of person who seeing that you're struggling financially says okay don't worry about it i will take care of it and yes i know big dog is going to say because you're the one who's providing that masculine energy and he's competing with you in his head but like what beyond that because you have everything taken care of like i pay for your house i pay for you to eat i pay like i literally pay for everything and yet that wasn't enough for you um, right? at the same time i was also feminine i was cooking i was doing dishes i was never speaking down to him i never said anything about you don't bring home money you don't whatever so go ahead. You you had a son instead of a man. <laughs> yeah, fuck that. That's it. Seriously, shout out to my boss bitches, wife and niggas. Exactly. You, <laughs> you had a little boy. Seriously. Basically, <laughs> you had a wife. Yeah. Exactly. You you had somebody. <laughs> you had a wife. Do you you had a little boy? Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's, that's, that's good. And, 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 seriously, that, and that's it. It's like, and he's going to resent that position at some point in his life, at, at some point in a relationship. And he's going to act out on that resentment. Whether it's infidelity, whether it's physical abuse, whether it's gambling habit or whatever, he's going to act out on, on that, that, that. He's going to, it's going to happen. He's going to throw a tantrum. You're correct. He did cheat. Um, but what makes, of course like, he did. That makes sense. How does you that know? make sense? Like, what's like? That was know? more about him. There's more. Be- there's more about him. Yeah. yeah. Like you know, like I said Holly Bailey, most arguably the most beautiful woman in the history of the world, and she was with Eric Benet, and he cheated on her multiple times. Not because she wasn't attractive, not because she wasn't even providing him sex. It was because he couldn't handle being called one time, Mister Barry. He was her. <laughs> she wifed him. And to the world, she was he, he was her wife. And he couldn't handle it. So he had to act out and reassert himself in destructive ways. Yeah, basically. Okay. All right. Paulo, response or prime? Um, <laughs> yeah, look, you've got a shitty end of a deal that I guess this is why um will's podcast exists on a thursday afternoon is that we're trying to have this conversation around reverence towards both men and women who've had a shitty deal in relationship and one of the things that we don't advocate for is 
house husbands. That's typically a bad deal. And it's a bad deal for y'all ladies. Why? Because you get used and abused. And then you come out of those relationships jaded. And then, you know, for you, it's a bad deal. And not only that, for the next guy who's most likely or probably has got good intention. But now that experience has given you a different (laughs) perspective on how to look at us men. And unfortunately, some guys will suffer with that. But it is a part of life. Um, Yeah. Look, we advocate for men with chest hair and for cavemen. So if you want to understand what the conversation is like, we have the masculine mind on a Thursday afternoon and we speak about these. We speak about free tenets that all men should endeavor to do. And that's what we describe as masculine. Yeah. Accountability, resilience and discipline. Yeah. So, I just want to add one thing, Paulo Fessa, and just to respond to ne- uh, Niha. You can't expect... Um, you can't expect people to value something if, never, if they never invested it into it or they never worked for it. A lot of times, modern women, they would, you would do the role and the work what a man would do. So how would he value something if you're never doing the work or investing into it? You're investing into it and doing what he's supposed to do. So I think both people have to invest and both people have to reciprocate to each other. But sometimes if it's one-sided for both men and women, but as a woman, if you're doing everything that a man should be doing, He's not investing. He's not working for it. Why would he value your relationship with you if he's not putting in, in anything into it? Sure. So if, if both parties are putting equal amount of work and you're both putting work into the relationship, you both value it because you're working. You're both investing into it. But if there's only one person investing into it, I wouldn't expect him to value it as much as you do because you're doing all the work and you're doing what he's supposed to be doing. So, yeah. That's why you got to let your man, like uh, we talked about this before, you got yeah, you gotta let these men and let them prove to you through a body of work that they really want to be with you and they really want the same thing that you're looking for. You have to prove it. You know, submission. When you know, uh, it's not our, uh, it's not something you just give to any man. He has to earn it. But uh, uh, I just have one more super chat. I just want to add on uh, real quick. Um, uh, Fenso Jack, uh, last super chat. Um, I don't know Maddie's husband. But if I was his close friend, I would advise him to get a prenup, a paternity test. His Instagram is King Copes. Go follow him. King Copes. K-I-N-G-K-O-P-E-S. Go follow him, baby. And put all of his assets in his mama's name. I can, <laughs> I can smell the divorce in under seven years. For Honey, we've years. already been together for nine. Okay. Anna, Anna, you had a question. You're on mute, Anna. Anna. Yeah, sorry. I was thinking um, that sometimes, you know, like we said, relationships, it's all about um, changing and making sacrifice. So let's say for you, married men, what is a sacrifice that you had to make in order for your relationship to work? And why did you decide it was worth making that sacrifice? And that's Damien, Big Dog, and uh, Paul Fesso. Go ahead. I don't look. I don't see it as sacrifice. Okay, I don't see it as, as sacrifice in the sense of we have to be intentional. That's why we talk about accountability. If you want a relationship, be intentional about it and move into lanes where married men and relationship operates. It's not a sacrifice. We're just moving differently. We're operating in different lanes. We're operating now as people in relationship rather than single people. And there are things that you do as a married person or a person in relationship that you don't do as a single person. For example, for me, one of the things that I had to um, override was my need to go out and relieve my stress via alcohol consumption and being around other people. I had to find and figure out in ways of, okay, if I should endeavor to be an accountable man, I should do, do things that are going to be conducive rather than detriment to my relationship. I have a wife who's sitting at home with our child while I'm still doing these things that are going to be detriment to those things. And it's more an accountability for me because it's my decision to be in a relationship rather than to a woman. I am a big proponent of men being leaders and men uh, doing things that are going to improve their ability to be good leaders. And in doing so, accountability is a big part of that. So I had to be accountable to my decision of being in a relationship. 
Yeah, and if, so if you're I, still I don't here, view it. it. Might be different yeah. for other people. My bad. I, uh, I, I agree. Damien. I agree. If you're still counting or considering all the things you're going to be losing, you're not ready to lose those things. You're not ready to be apart from those things because you should see, just like Paul Fester said, you should see that next step as a progression, as an evolution, as opposed to oh, here's the things I have to give up. I evolved into a person who could be married, and I was still evolving early in my relationship until I revolved through. But now, straight up, I feel like I'm killing in that marriage. You know, I'm, I'm a, and that's the thing. It's like, but that took a progression. And I have to realize this was the thing I wanted, I needed, and I wanted for a long term. And I had to give up my childish things. Yeah, don't get me wrong. It was nice. I was a club promoter out in San Francisco. It, I, it was the shit. I mean, there was women, there were celebrities, there was alcohol, there was music. It was the shit. To, to to that person who didn't know what he wanted to do with his life or didn't realize that that was a road to nowhere. When I realized what I wanted to do, I realized it was shit. Now, I was like, that was some bullshit, you know? And I'm so happy I didn't get caught up because there's some friends of mine who are still rocking in the same way. And I've never been married, no kids, nobody who, 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 the things I say now matter to my family. And the things I, I I have a legacy. I have something that when when I die, there's gonna be you know I want to be one of those kids that I, I'm gonna sit there 80 years old and look at 75 people that are all here because of my of me, you know, and my wife, you know. There's that's that's the kind of situation that matters to me. It's like who gives a shit about you when all the, when the lights come on. Okay, thank you, Damien and Big Dog. I know you're married 19 years. Oh man. My biggest sacrifice, well, my biggest issue in my marriage was me being able to deal with the down periods in my marriage without dealing with other women. <laughs> that was my biggest problem. Like every time me and my wife get into it, I'll find another female to deal with. And then once I deal with that woman, I would go back home and act like I ain't did nothing wrong. So I had to get out there, part. All right. Shout out to you. Thank you so much, uh, Big Dog. But uh, yeah, um, shout out to everybody. We have come to the conclusion of the podcast. Shout out to everybody on the panel and shout out to everybody on the live. <laughs> Man, this was fun. Uh, <laughs> it was a great show, great conversations. I definitely enjoyed everybody's um, perspectives, whether we agree or disagree. I definitely appreciate uh, having the conversation. You know, it's uh, sometimes it's hard to talk about the harsh truths of dating struggles of what uh, many women experience. So shout out to the panel. Thank you so much for having an open conversation and uh, whether we agree to disagree, but as long as we can have the dialogue and to figure out a solution. So if you guys watch my podcast, that's the ultimate goal of my podcast. I don't believe in blaming women, blaming men, men blaming women online. I do believe in having conversations to figure out figure out our differences of what we can what we can do to come together uh because i do believe men and women we're better together uh than apart so shout out to the people who love that type of content who support that type of content and who always tune into my live shows and shout out to everybody that always time to jumps in as a, as a guest thank you so much but what's final thoughts for everybody uh what's everybody's final thoughts from tonight's conversation what's your takeaways and how can people find you all right how can people find you so they can support you uh, and support you know, everything that you're doing. So um, uh, let me start with the ladies. Thank you so much for making the time. Uh, what's your final thoughts from tonight's conversation and how can people find you? I'll start with you, uh, Amber. I know there's somebody that's trying to find you right now. So <laughs> you're, 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 go ahead, Amber. Um, final thoughts. End of the day, uh, live your life how you want to. You know what you want, the type of person you know, it's good to ask for advice, but ultimately it's your life you're living. So, you know, what type of people to find, right, to to be with. Um, so at the end of the day, it's really what makes you happy, what's best for you. Um, and you can find me at underscore Adventure Amber on Instagram. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you so much, Amber. I'll keep it moving. I'll pass it to you, Miss True. Thank you so much for jumping on final thoughts and how can they find you it's true final thoughts um 
I think I've gained a, a greater perspective. Men and women both have different ideas of what they find attractive or what they are and aren't looking for. And I think a big thing about this is how you're perceived. Until you really know somebody, you really don't know. So you could assume that somebody is masculine, feminine. You don't really know anybody until you really get to know them. So I just think I got a better perspective. Um, you could find me at Miss Truth at, on Instagram, M-S-T-R-U-E. Thank you for having me. No, it was great. Thank you so much, Miss True. I pass it to you, uh, Anna. Final thoughts, and how can they be find you, Anna? Well, I, I am, you know, thankful. Thank you, Will, for inviting me. Thank you, everybody, for your opinions, your perspective. I feel like it was um, interesting to hear different opinions, and it's good to hear from people that are married, people that are divorced, like Niha. and and it's a way I could incorporate that into my life since I'm the youngest here. <laughs> And honestly, I don't want to be found by the audience because I saw people with really nasty ways. And I just, I don't want to be associated with that type of people. <laughs> I'm good where I'm at. <laughs> All right. Thank no you. Worries. Thank you so much, Anna. Uh, let me pass it to you, Madison. Madison, thank you so much for jumping on. You are definitely, you are a one of a kind. <laughs> but uh <laughs> Final thoughts and how can they find you, Madison? Thank you. Trust me, I am very well aware that I am all things extra, okay? Like, I get it. Um, I'm just really grateful that I have this conversation with you guys. Like, everybody is so unique and has their own perspective and experience. And it's really fun to have open and honest conversations. And those don't happen very often. So I'm really grateful that all of you were really vulnerable. And... Um, yeah, I hope everybody does find true love because it does exist. And I know it's corny and it sounds like totally fairy tale fantasy, but it's real, guys. And I hope that gives you hope. So you can find me at Life Coach Lawyer on Instagram. And then I have a, a couple other businesses that are all linked if you want to follow all the things. So I appreciate you guys. Oh, no, definitely. Thank you so much, Madison. Definitely enjoyed having you on the podcast. Pass it to you, Niha. Final thoughts, and how could they find you? Are you on mute? You're on mute. Sorry, I loved hearing everybody's lived perspectives in life. Um, it was a really eye-opening experience. Everybody's opinions were very valued, and the diversity in all of our experiences really um, contributed to this chat being so colorful. Um, and my IG handle is functional health and medicine underscore after each letter if you want to add me. All right. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much, uh, Niha. Uh, let me just pass it to the fellas real quick. Final thoughts. Big dog, always, as always, thank you for always joining the main panel. Uh, final thoughts and how can they find you, big dog? Oh, man, it was, it was entertaining. Madison, you are hilarious. I, I love you. You are hilarious. You're funny. Thanks, Steve. <laughs> but uh, it was entertaining and education at the same time. Um, but um, yeah, but if you're looking for me, I'm on YouTube, Big Dog Barking. I be doing my um live shows Thursdays at five o'clock Central Time. And uh, I'm on Instagram, big dog barking underscore between big and dog. And yeah, that's where I'm at, Instagram and YouTube. All right, no worries. Thank you so much, uh, big dog. Always a pleasure to have you on. Um, pass it to you, Damon. Final thoughts, how, they can, how can they find you? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's always a pleasure being on your panel, bro. Uh, all I feel like, the truths aren't as harsh if you prepare for them. If you don't delude yourself and you prepare for them, the truths in dating won't be as harsh. They'll just be, it is what it is. Uh, yeah, I think everybody had some uh, great insights. Uh, yeah, uh, if somebody wanted to get a hold of me, uh, my IG is can I get some podcast? .com. It's uh, can I get some podcast, not dot com, but can I get some podcast? And I do have a YouTube channel that I never put anything on. Uh, I got some stuff from like maybe eight nine months ago that i was doing when i was doing uh shows pretty regularly but i've just been too busy lately it's can i get some podcast and All i right. pretty much followed everybody on here except Anna because she's been funny yeah 
All right. I put it in the private chat. I put my Instagram in the private chat. I didn't mean you guys. I meant the, the people in the comments. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, no hard feelings to nobody. I'm just messing with you. <laughs> All right, thank you so much, Damien. And for people who who are who are part of the channel, just to let you guys know, Damien is going to be joining me uh, this Live Saturday. In the studio. In the studio this Saturday is coming down to San Francisco, and we're going to have a panel of ladies, and we're going to have a, a great topic to discuss. So shout out to you, Damien. Uh, uh, prime final thoughts. How can they find you? Uh, no final thoughts other than grow the fuck up, be an adult, communicate with each other. Um can't find me if you look for me i guess i guess now i can start sharing my my information yeah, if you guys want to find me you can find me on instagram and on threads uh it's operator underscore primate that's prime and then eight just like how my name is spelled um but if you really want to get a hold of me just uh get a hold of will <laughs> yeah, just just find him on the on the podcast. You find him here. Yeah, just find me on the podcast. <laughs> All right, thank you so much, Prime. And last but not least, Paulo, thank you. Final thoughts: No one can find you. Actually, you can find me. You can find me on Thursday uh, on Will Show, uh, the Masculine Mind. Um, final thoughts: Be extremely. Um, I should say. Men who say they want to be stepfathers, be extremely, extremely um, observant of those kind of men. Um, there is a reason for that. And again, um, if we're going to offer you anything of the sort where qualities of a man that makes a man what we sort of revere as manly man, th those guys tend to... Um, sell you their vision and they sell you their vision through action they don't sit there and talk to you about oh I'm going to do this I'm going to do that this is what I'm doing I hope that you would like to, to come along with the trip and if you don't um, more than welcome to be at the last enjoy the rest of your, your you know rest of your evening or your life so um, yeah be extremely aware that there are uh, unfortunately men who will sell you a dream and then show you a different uh, reality to what it is so find men who speak uh, life into their own dreams because typically those are the men who have good intention and have the right intention for a relationship should they offer it to you um, well it's a pleasure to the ladies i don't know who um, got you so mad madison but i didn't deserve that beef so uh, <laughs> I, might have to have a uh, I might have to have a conversation with my uh, I might have to have a conversation with my um, with my therapist, and I might have to go and cut some trees uh, to get some testosterone back. Uh, to the to the fellas, it's been uh, great having conversation with y'all. Well, again, as always, it's been a privilege and an honor to uh, always be part of the conversation. So thank you for having me. All right, no worries. Thank you so much. And then just one last super chat from uh, Fenso Jack. Uh, he dropped a super chat. Uh, he said, uh, "Shaking my head, just saw Amber's IG. It's a no go. Turn back." Run, she's a thirst trap in, in real life. Don't wife her. I can't be you. She's a canoe. I think this is exactly what I mean. They they saw how she is, how her personality is, and they're judging on her Instagram. Oh. I just have a quick make comment. it make it's sense. Make He's it make joke. sense. Loser. Yeah, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. He's joking. He would be all over it. See you later. Follow me on IG. All right, I just no want to worries. say but Instagram doesn't define who I am. They're just moments in my life. Exactly. I go to a, yeah, exactly. a lot of concerts and festivals, but it doesn't define the would He would ignore all that in two seconds. <laughs> so I'm going two minutes <laughs> with you, and he'll be like, fuck what I said. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's fine. <laughs> it's all right. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, appreciate everybody who donated Super Chat. Thank you so much. But shout out to the panel. Uh, ladies, fellas, thank you so much for your time. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you love the content, see value in it. We, we do go live every single Wednesday, so you get notified we go live next time. But we'll see you guys next time. Everybody have a great night. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.